are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. Boone. What's up there? My dude. How's it going, Taylor? Good. How are you, buddy? Thanks I'm for good, coming man. on the podcast. Hell yeah, man. man. I appreciate you, dude. Thanks for having uh, me. Absolutely, man. Would you, uh, did you do anything fun for Halloween? I dressed up as, uh, I wore a Hawaiian shirt. Uh-huh. And I, uh, my costume was a uh, Jason Walk No Moa. J- you know? Oh, like Jason Momoa? Yeah. But Jason Walk No Moa. Yeah. Like Hawaii, clever. Hawaii, you know, before the fire from the waist up, Hawaii after the fire from the waist down, you know? Oh. Yeah. Is yeah. that a prepared bit that you had? Yeah, for, for sure. The, the but I mean, it was my first Hawaiian shirt, so it's like a monumental thing in my life. It's right. just like pre-Hawaiian shirt and like post-Hawaiian shirt, you know? Mm-hmm. So I've, I've turned a corner now in my life. So, so now so. you're buying more Hawaiian shirts. Uh, I have two. You broke the seal? Yeah. Are you going to fill up? Are you going to exclusively wear Hawaiian shirts? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I don't I don't like them. I think uh, I want to like maybe once or twice a year, but no, I don't want to wear Why them all don't the you time. Like them? Uh, That's some people's look all the time. Dude. Yeah, I know. I, I'm against it. You know why? Well, I feel like Tim Kennedy, you know, or like the Boogaloo Boys. Those I'm not a Boogaloo Boy. Just putting that out there, you know. Oh, they're like the guys that go. They're kind of like Proud Boys, but they wear the shirts. They wear the floral shirts or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So not those guys. I'm against that. Okay. But, uh, did, did they ruin the flower shirt? I don't know. Or the, the Hawaiian shirt. I don't really know much about those guys. I don't think they have much power. So believe it or not, I managed to ignore most of that stuff, even though I lived in Portland where like all that fucking proud boys, Antifa bullshit was happening. Yeah. Like all the time I was like, Oh, I would look at it in the news. And I'd be like, this is fucking stupid. And then I would stop. Walk, you know what I mean? Cause it's just like a bunch of idiots on both sides, just kind of running at each other, like pl- LARPing kind of playing. Like, yeah, they're playing Lord of the Rings out there. Yeah. And- that's exactly why I never got involved in any of that. No, I don't know if they had a lot of power, so I don't know if they ruined the Hawaiian shirt. I just yeah, it seems to be like a you wear them all the time, and that seems you know like you've given up on life. And, <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah, you know, like, what I mean. right? Like, so maybe if you're like Tim Kennedy, you know, or like some. I don't Jack- really know who that. Is. I know he was just on the Rogan podcast. Yeah, yeah. But I don't really know. Yeah, who I was that listening guy to is. it earlier today, and they were painting a bright future of America. Um, they were no. kind of being negative about America on that. Yeah, but no, they're you know. We're rightfully concerned. Sure. I feel kind of weird with these sunglasses. I'm going to take them off, you know? Nice. Now I can see those beautiful blue eyes. Thank dude. you. Thank you. You got some big old honking blue eyes on you, dude. It's thank- the oceans. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, some girl hit me up and said she wanted to uh, me to sit on a futon and to look at me. <laughs> I was like, uh-huh. Cool. Well, uh, you know, I'm a person, right? I yeah. have feelings. You know, yeah, I'm anyway. not just a stuffed animal. <clears throat> right. Plus, it's like for you to sit on a futon, you would have to be removed from your chair. I know. Which would put you in a very vulnerable space. Like, what if you? What if this woman was crazy and you needed to fucking scoot away? Yeah. You could not get away. No. I, at a strategic disadvantage. It would be for like, sure. you know what it would be like? It'd be like that movie, that Stephen King movie. Oh my God. It would be like. Uh, Misery was it misery? Oh, where with, she hobbles him? Yeah, oh, where she god. breaks yeah. his legs so he has yeah. to stay with her or whatever. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> I gotta exactly. take care of you for ten months. Uh-huh. Dude, Kathy Bates cool. was trying to get oh you to come god. over to her house, dude. That's what it was. That was uh, old school James Caan, right? That was, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's yeah, it was. Movie. Scary. She yeah. was Kathy Bates was a scary yeah. bitch in that movie, dude. Yeah. I think she's uh so how do you how do you I'm curious how do you now that you bring it you brought this up all right but how do you how do you do with the ladies being in the chair still I have to know okay do you still just fucking little ins- slay yes but there's these group of ladies and they're called wheelchair devotees and no. they're a wild bunch and so they sexually objectify me they do not care about my feelings they look at me as just an object. You know, and they only want me for my wheelchair. You know, <laughs> no way, dude. Yeah, for sure. Is this a bit? But no, no. This is like real life. I've encountered them. You know, is like, this a real like group? Like on Reddit, you can look this up. Wheelchair yeah. devotees. Uh huh. Not divorcees, because that's a whole different deal. You know, <laughs> like, but d- devotees. I mean, I'm in the divorcee mode as well. You know, because I'm 46 years old. So it's Shit. like, right. You look young, dude. Thank you. Everybody's going to think I had Jason Bateman on the podcast. I'm just going to say that this is a uh, – I'm just going to put Jason Bateman in there. Yeah, I was working out there. I was like – I was thinking of like nose arcs maybe. Yeah, no – like no legs arcs. Yeah, but I could make – Nose arcs. It'd be like if you had a big stupid nose or something, but you yeah. don't. You it, know? It's in my joke book. I'm yeah, trying to make some, it work something somewhere. Something with Bateman. Something yeah. with arrested development. That's yeah. There's a bit there, I feel like. Yeah. 
Thank but you. so these women, you've encountered these women. Oh yeah, that are real. basically you are a yes. fetish for them. Yes, I mean oh I God. would not date them, but I would fuck them, and I have <laughs> fucked. Them. I mean I'm a guy, I'm not a you know. Yeah, can amoeba, you do mission? You know? Do you do missionary or do you do? Do you just? Yeah. Do you just lay? You just lay back and let them just go to town. What's well, how does it work? Per- okay, how does what work? The whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, how does the process work? Well, I'm not like the one pump guy, you know. So like, right. you gotta, you know, I have stamina. Do you think you have extra stamina because of because of the of the disability? <laughs> uh, I did not know where you're gonna go with that. <laughs> Do I have extra stamina because of? The, well, yeah, because a I, lot of places you could go with. Well, that. I don't want to be a fat, you know, and so right. I don't want to be like one of those mobility scooter people, you know. And <laughs> Do you look down on those. People? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, they're my okay, arch. Okay. They're my arch nemesis. I think they're the downfall this of Western is great civil- perspective we're getting right now. <laughs> civilization. Yes. No, I have a. I have a pass. I can say anything I want about them. Although, they do not like to be attacked at comedy shows. That is not a good. What like somebody in a rascal scooter? Yeah. At a comedy or show? just someone with some girth, you know. Yeah. I was like, listen up, fats. They don't like when you say that like that, you know? So, but no, uh, so I don't want to be fat. So yeah. I'd, I'd like to stay in my manual wheelchair and like push everywhere with my arms. And mm-hmm. helps, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I always wondered about hills. that, if that's like a choice or it's like, it seems like some people need to have the. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 No, I, you know, I love a lot of disabled people, but you know, not every disabled person is a saint, you know? Oh, so dude. what? I know. I feel like people think that every disabled person is kind of like a, like that's like the pre. I know. Do you think do you think that there's disabled people that get away with things because in they're like not good people because they can hide under that guise of like. Yeah, I get away with things, but yeah, no, you're talking to one, you know, like <laughs> no, no, I try to, to you know, but I, I I try to be a good person, you know, but uh-huh. like I'm an asshole, I guess occasionally, you but know. You can kind of let people let it slide. Because of the chair sometimes? Oh, yeah. How much, wh- what's, like, the craziest thing you've gotten away with, you think? Or, like, gotten away with saying? You know, like, making fun of somebody or something, and they're, like, or, like, you know, they go to, like, fight. Don't say that to me. Talk to me like that. You know, and you're, like, whoa, I'm in the chair, you know? No, no, no I'm the opposite <laughs> oh, of that. Oh, okay. Because then I'll, like, how's this going to look when you have to go to work on Monday and tell all of your coworkers that you got your ass beat by a guy in a wheelchair, you know? Right. So, so I've you said wanna, that. You, nice. The Fort Lauderdale Airport. Oh, no. Not yeah. There. Well, he tried to skip the skycap line, you know, and I was clearly there. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm in line. I had my bags, you know, like one on my lap, one next to me. Mm-hmm. He just looked at me, walked right in front of me. I was like, oh, I'm I'm in the line, you know. Mm-hmm. He just kept looking at me and just like stood there. Damn, what an asshole. Like, yeah, I know. But a guy, a, a cool uh, skycap, like diffused the situation. Like, I'm just yeah. checking in over here, so it's fine. But I did say that line, you know, like. I feel like rarely is the person in the chair in the wrong, right? Like in that situation, let's say you got in a fist fight with that guy. He yeah. was in the wrong. He shouldn't have been being a dick to the guy in the chair. Yeah. Well, something that I pondered because another comic was uh, lighting me up at Access one time, which is funny, by the way. He's a hilarious guy. Yeah. You love that kind of shit. You like the jokes. I absolutely. Yeah. And so I started thinking like if an Asian guy and a white guy in a wheelchair got into a fight, like who's committing the hate crime? <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's hiding my brain in a knot. It's something I think about, you know, not all the time. Or any any race versus any race for that matter. I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, the tie still goes to the white. That's the tag I had on that one. The what? The tie goes to the white, Uh, you know, like it's probably going to be me, you know, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll get, you'll get labeled as the, yeah, as the racist. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right though. So you were saying before the pod, you're just calling everybody racist now. It's a new thing you're doing. Uh, no, no, no. (laughs) I I don't like racism. I think it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's very bad. Yeah. No, I was not saying that. You're trying to. No, no, but uh, people in. that people that like make a wheelchair joke at you or something, you're just like you're racist, dude. Quit being oh, racist. I love it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you're, you've uh, you've you've leveled up from basically wheelchair people are their own race now is what you're trying to say. Yeah. Well, you know, like if you say ableist, that's too on the nose and mm-hmm. well, not funny. No, it's not. So I just go something else, you yeah. know, or classist, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Socialist, just tie their knot in the brain, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, so where are you from? You're not from Austin, are you? I am from Austin. You're from Austin? Yeah. Wow, the rare, the the unicorn local here. Look so at you invaders. Have You were born here? I was born in Dallas, mm-hmm. and I was uh, raised in Austin. Okay. And then I moved to Colorado. Nice. It's actually where I got hurt in a car accident. Oh yeah, I was gonna. I wanted to get into that. But yeah, 
And then um, I moved to Florida, and then they moved uh, back here about 15, 14, 15 years ago. Okay, and have you been doing stand-up the whole time you've been back, or when did you start doing stand-up? No. Oh, okay. No, I've not been doing stand-up very long, actually. Five and a half months. Nice. Yeah. That's not bad. That's pro- I think that's about how long. Well, I guess December will be a year for me. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah brother. Newbies. Absolutely. We're getting our, we're entering our first stripe on our white belt, dude. I'm tuning it up. Well, in the comedy dojo. Yeah, for sure. I think by the, you know. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Oh, uh, me too. I mean, plus we're doing it in Austin. We're starting in Austin, and so it's like. Yeah. You're definitely getting sharpened, you know, for sure. Because there's yeah, a lot I, of fun. people I'm wondering here. about that. Like, let's say we keep doing our thing for the next year or so, and then we go venture outside of Texas or something, or even outside of the, st- the city, and just I'm, like, curious how good or bad I'm going to do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's I don't some... know what that's like going and doing it somewhere else. I know it's like with music, you know, is, which is what I'm used to doing. It's right. like it's kind of like the same a little bit this like obviously the crowd's going to be different but it's not so different as like you know what do, what will people in denver think is funny versus people in right. austin where it's like it's like you're just going to go play metal for people you right. know what i mean and it's right. like j- people that are coming to the show generally like metal and so you're playing for people that like what you're doing right but it's like if you take the comedy thing around around different cities it's like you're going to be dealing with different ideologies and different you know yeah for sure i don't know if i uh my comedy would go over well in portland you know although, i think it would i think it would although i've saw uh, nick mullen you know who he is i don't M- mull dog on instagram okay, but maybe i've seen his name before he has this awesome bit about he's not a january 6 guy but he looks like he's one you know <laughs> and he's like he was getting into like the um like the thought process of a guy who's going to january 6 mm-hmm. like oh you can't tell me what to do yeah oh. i think i've seen that yeah, yeah. back, back like clip that. that's nick and i think that's from portland actually okay and so and they we're like, liking that oh yeah they're well killed. see portland's like a repressed like all those a lot of people there basically in order to keep their jobs and their friends and family like you know in good relations with them you know people yeah. have to pretend that they don't think certain shit is funny and right. then they go with their their real friends where they can go, you know, what I right. mean, and send each other right. fucking, you know, I mean, that inappropriate, be a- offensive, silly, racist jokes, whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever you, whatever you want to, see, just stuff that people think is funny and offensive. Yeah. And it's like that. All that happens in in private in the yeah. DMs out there in places I mean, like Portland. It's funny. My friends were just telling me about like how the crowds there, you know. Are uh, like they just saw David Lucas not too long ago, right. who was like the worst, the right. worst right. for for uh, for that kind of crowd. You right. know, you would think, but right. then all the people from Portland. If you're going there, you're going you're gonna go to if you're gonna go see David Lucas in Portland, you'd like you like David Lucas, right? You know? And if you wandered in there and you're some you know blue haired you know offended person with a yeah. septum ring yeah you know you're gonna be gravely gravely disappointed when you sit down for david lucas absolutely uh but he said they said the crowd was loving it and he's yeah getting all, getting all wild yeah i was talking to another uh comic and like some of the rooms in like san antonio they have like a different mix you know there's like a more hispanic room there's like sure the black audience you know and he said it was like a lot of a lot of fun actually and yeah. so he uh, san antonio is not that far away so. no no I'm, not at all so it's next up on your list huh? absolutely you should go out there man. yeah making have you been on place. kill tony yet no dude you got to get plucked on kill tony are you signing up every week yeah almost dude. every week i may miss one occasionally i'm i'm praying I'm to the bucket gods hell yeah because you're gonna get them we I'm, don't want to give it away but you got you've you're so like fucking <laughs> locked and loaded for for kt yeah when you get up no, there. i'm ready to go you yeah, know i can't wait i did get up at the the mothership open mic another yeah, time tell me about that, that congratulations the, by the way dude yeah well cool. i just put my name on a list you know right it's, you got lucky i let destiny right handle it no but it was cool because cool that they um that. yeah like every sunday monday night you know it's awesome but the when I went to go see my first Kill Tony in person, uh, Genevieve, who's you know, a crew at the Mothership, mm-hmm. um, she's hilarious. She, she's the best. Yeah, she sat us at the Vulcan, and so like when I, the all the Kill Tony, uh, she used to work at the Vulcan, and right. so like all the um, Kill Tony tickets when they moved over to the Mothership, like sold out quick, mm-hmm. and so I finally got a ticket in there, and she was there, and she was like, <clears throat> she was like, oh, it's good to see you, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, she was the host on. It wasn't this oh, this the Monday? Mic. Yeah, uh, uh, the mic. So she got to kind of see you come yeah. up and go yeah. up there. And so like David Jolly mm-hmm. and Cam Patterson and Ryer Cameraman, those are the, like the three new yeah. uh, crew people at the mothership. They were all in the room, you know. Yeah. And so it was like, and a couple of people there from before. And um, how'd you do? Yeah, I went went well. Did it you went crush? Really well. I don't nice. know if I crushed. I didn't get like a official call back or anything, yeah. you know, but. 
I don't um, think they do a callback really. Like I think they do. Oh, they, they do. do. There are oh, certain okay. people. So like it, if they want to put you on a different show. Yeah, or just to come back. Mm-hmm. Hey, we want to see you again. You know, because mm-hmm. the Adam Egget, the talent guy. Yeah. You know, he's sitting in there, and but I did really well. You know, it was it was awesome. Yeah, it was brother. so much fun. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw you at uh, Roscoe's, dude, and I just walked in. I sat down. Um, I think I put my name in the bucket. Audrey was doing like a yeah. <clears throat> kind of her own bucket pull kind of mic thing. And, uh, dude, you did this joke. And I don't want to give away your bit, but it, it was so fun. It Your set was so funny, and I was just sitting – I was dying. So I can't – Thanks, man. I, yeah, you're one of my favorites in town. I, can't, I hope uh, – Hope all the best things happen to you. Yeah, brother. that that mic that you saw, I got booked on a you know off the grid show because mm-hmm. of that you know that of mic course. you know. So it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I love Roscoe's. You do good and you get stuff. Yeah, you know. I'm actually I'm going to Roscoe's tonight. Nice. Yeah. Is there a mic tonight? Yeah, it's a co mic. Okay. It's like the I think it's like a nine thirty sign up, okay. and then I'll hit the uh, the creek in the cave like midnight mic. You know. Nice. Yeah, I might so. try to hit that up too. I'm trying to get more reps in. So yeah. Um. So going back to Denver, are you willing to like talk about what happened sure. in Denver? Yeah, yeah. So I was, what, I was. Give us like the backstory on on, on your accident and like what happened, and then kind of like the recovery process. You know what I mean? Because it's just like a lot to go through. I feel yeah. like people can't really. So I was a uh, 24 when I got hurt, and I was living up in Carbondale, Colorado, which is like close to Aspen, mm-hmm. and I was like working for a custom home builder, and I was driving home. Um, from work and I fell asleep and I I had alcohol in my system, but it was below the legal limit, which is awesome because my insurance, you know, didn't right. get fucked with or, you know, thank God. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and, um, but I fell asleep and I was like going way too fast around a corner and I flew out of the top of my Jeep. So was it a Jeep with no, it was not a Jeep Wrangler Sahara with a hard top. And I oh, punched out of that, you oh know, like God, fucking serious? Like a bullet, no, like I a think, cannonball. Yeah, think goose in old school Top Gun. You know, like when he. Oh yeah, I haven't really seen that, but yeah, when he he gets he they hit the ejector seat, you know, and he yeah. hits the top and kills himself. But I did not kill myself. Nice, that's so lucky. Yeah, for sure. So you broke through a hard top. Yeah. Of a of, and there was like a bullet hole in it where your body <laughs> exited. Yeah. Well, I just saw like the top of the Jeep. It was like completely sheared off. You know, mm-hmm. it was like the insurance company was like, we think this is a total loss. And I was like, oh, you think so? Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. Actuary. You know, you're like, I, is, can your body get totaled? I know <laughs> your body kind of like a half loss, you know, like yeah, yeah, 50%. Exactly. No, <laughs> best we can do 50% of you. Um, But uh, no. So I like I broke like three places in my neck and it went everywhere around my spinal cord. And it didn't, what? it didn't injure my spinal cord up high, but, um, and then I broke like, like, I think it's six vertebrae in my back. Like they, it's called a burst fracture. They just blow apart, you know, oh they just shatter. So that's where I got paralyzed, about my waist, a l- little bit low, uh, below my waist level. So, um, Jesus, dude. I do have a, uh, can I have one of those? Yeah, I got you. Hell yeah. Do you smoke weed too? Yeah. We can get some weed going if you want. Yeah. Is I'll that going to make you weird? Are you going to get weird? Uh, I'll could, probably that get, could only be good. I'll probably get funnier, yeah. you know? Harrison, could you grab the weed stuff for, oh, did he disappear to go grab the weed stuff or was he gone already? Yeah, no, I think he took off. Wow. He's the best. Harrison is the best, bro. Um, But yeah, so. Yeah, so I, I broke my neck. Um. And so I had a halo on, which is like this medieval torture device. And so it's like like four titanium bolts, two in the front, two in the back. And your body, to like keep your neck. It's like a headgear. Kind yeah, of for like bone to heal, bone has to be like stacked on, on top of other bone to callus, you know? Yeah. And so um, when I broke my neck, I was in a halo and they would come around. Every, your body is trying to, if something foreign is in your body. There's a joke in there, but if something <laughs> foreign, is in, foreign is in your body, it's trying to expel it, you know? So they'd come around every week with like a little Allen wrench and tighten it, and you can hear it inside your head. It's like, it's fucking What? It's medieval. like a screw in your fucking head? Yeah, and your body's trying to push it out, and they're trying to push it in because it needs to heal. Uh, well, it didn't, it didn't uh, work. I know. It didn't work. Wait, so what is that supposed to even do? It's supposed to, in order for like bone to heal, it has to be like pressed on top of other bone. The so, pipe is in that uh, Yeti can at the very bottom of that thing. Thank you, buddy. Um, so it's supposed to like 
the bone is supposed to be pressed on top of the other bone for it to heal, for it okay. to callus over and then heal. But the halo wasn't working. And so um, I had to get this like surgery. I have a surgery tip for people, okay? If you're nervous about surgery and you're interviewing surgeons, which you should, you know, as is your right as a, you know, American consumer, you mm-hmm. know, because of our great healthcare system. <laughs> and uh, um, if you're interviewing a surgeon, ask them about their golf game. Because you want a good surgeon, you want a, a, a good surgeon is going to be playing golf half of the time and operating the other time. You want him relaxed and like not stressed out. So ask him about his like favorite country club. You know, like right. what are you shooting? You know, like yeah, and he'll forget about how he's operating on your fucking yeah. brain and spine. Yeah, maybe not. No, not during the surgery. Oh. pre-surgery. You okay, know, yeah. But so when I was uh, I had I was going to get the halo was not working, and so they were going to. Uh, fuse my neck together it's still fused together it's got like titanium cable around like the still yeah Holy shit. yeah never gonna go away you're like the six million dollar man dude. absolutely that's awesome you know and um but they had to do what's called an awake intubation and usually they tilt your head back for an intubation and uh, shove a tube well, up your nose intub- oh yeah yeah intubation right yeah. trying to m- make so uh, you can breathe so you can breathe during surgery right but they couldn't tilt my head back because I was in the surgery. And so this anesthesiologist comes by and goes, I'm going to give you some cocaine up each nostril to numb up your nose. No way. And I looked at my mom and my dad and I was like, did he just say cocaine? Medical you know? grade cocaine? Yeah. Clear medical grade liquid cocaine. Holy I didn't even, shit. I know. I was so fucking high when I snorted that. He yeah. gave me like three eyedropper fools i was not nervous in any way oh, it was they shot liquid cocaine up your nose yep yeah, uh, three eyedropper fools like sniffed <laughs> it up you know and I was harrison's like, like harrison's awake dude he's like where can i get some of I that know. shit i didn't even know it existed before i saw it you know oh, yeah, it was weird. wild you how's know? that not on the streets i know dude. i wish it was you know Wait, i look so what was the surgery on it's the fuse the first true vertebrae in my neck i broke c1 and c2 so you didn't break your legs Mm. You, uh, you broke your your spine your vertebrae. Yeah. Okay. Well, the spinal cord is like inside of your spinal column, and the spinal your spinal cord is about the width of your finger, mm-hmm. and it's about the consistency of a banana. And so it's like it's really it's easy to susceptible to up. like have shit fuck up. And so your bones are you know your spinal column are the bones all the way up in your neck all the way down to your are you know it's a great design monkey bone you know which we still have all the yeah. way down to your butt you know yeah and so it's designed to protect it and so usually it is protected and it did so it's like my bones broke and by breaking it like enabled like uh like my spinal cord to be nicked although up, up it didn't hit it up high but like on the on the mri they have like the in the hospital in the rehab so i'm was in the rehab hospital when mm-hmm. this happened and they have like a conference of people you know and they sit around like i think he's pretty fucked up you know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah me too george yeah, yeah i can't walk anymore so uh thanks for that you know jesus christ and so they looked at like my mri and there was like a fucking divot in it you know like so do um, you have those pictures you get can you somewhere can you airdrop your x-rays to us so no i don't have them i don't have them on my phone i know i know Sorry, next time you'll come back we'll do it yeah next time. absolutely you know so I, how close were you to like being fully paralyzed from the neck down because that seems like a, yeah it seems like that is a thin line right yeah that's it's so like my three bones got broken like there were two bones like two vertebrae in my neck got broken but it went everywhere around my spinal cord, which is extremely lucky because I do everything by myself, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I don't have anyone that helps me at home. That's I'm awesome. wheeling around and, you know, doing shit. And, um, but if you have a high spinal cord injury like that, I mean, you're, it's like, you got to vent and you got to, yeah, you know, you feeding can't, you to, can't right, breathe and right, move, and like move your arms. God. And it's like, that's what Christopher Reeve had. He broke like seat. Like C two up in his neck back in the day, so crazy. Yeah, I had an uncle who was like, or a cousin who was like that, and he painted like these crazy paintings with his mouth. Yeah, he's like Ron something or other. He was injured in a surfing accident. Yeah, he was like legendary in the in the in the disabled game for a little while. You yeah, know? <laughs> he yeah. Was, he was a goat of the game for a little for in, oh, like, in the early nineties. Ron something I don't remember. Painting he a, wise, he's or? like a second cousin, so I, okay. I didn't see him that much. Like painting wise or like painting wise? disabled well, surfing wise. No, because I went in on that. You know, wait, like, there's da- disabled surfing. There yeah, I mean they'll let gimps do anything. You know, they feel <laughs> sorry for us. You know, so I watched. Okay, this is funny. I watched a group of 
people I know, they're going to hate this, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's so funny. It was these group of fat people in wheelchairs, you know, and they had like these Nepalese Sherpas like carrying them up like Mount Everest. And I watched a documentary film about it and I was like, <laughs> I fucking hate you guys. You know, like you're like, a disgrace to disabled people. I know, people. like we accomplished something. Like, no, the Sherpas accomplished <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah, they carried you up there. You know, like that's not cool. You know, so you're like add the chair. That's an extra forty. That's an extra hundred pounds. Yeah, these were not skinny whites. These were fat whites. You know, it's always the whites. They're <laughs> it's always always the whites. Right. Dude. No black person's going. You know what I need to do after I get my you know diabetes feet cut off, is I need to go over to Nepal and like summit Mount Everest. They do not think that, you know? That is a white person deal, yeah, you know? Dude. Right, so anyway. Dude, have you seen the whole thing in, uh, in I don't know, maybe Harrison, maybe if you're feeling uh, feeling up to it, you could look up some clips. I for forgot to grab the mouse and shit, so I can't, he's gotta look straight up. Oh, but um, there's uh, there's these these like, this whole trend, I guess, of like obese people that are, um, like saying that they need all these accommodations, kind of like they're disabled people. Have you seen this going around? Yeah, I hate those people. I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty wild, dude. If you look up, like, I think just like maybe, what do you think? Obese people, fat, fat flyer accommodations. Yeah, You'll fat get, flyer <laughs> accommodations. You yeah. get somebody like ranting about like, right. we need you know bigger seat belts and yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But what? How do you? F how does that make you feel as a guy who's disabled but also? does a lot of shit you know you i don't peg you for the guy that's always like excuse me sir this is my like you probably just no. do the the minimum of like yeah of like needs you know extra needs right yeah yeah I'm, I'm like i'm courteous to people but if like people are in my way like out in the world i mean you guys are all road cones to me you know like if i'm on a flat surface you're slowing me down you know <laughs> like you gotta be walking i'm wheeling in and out of you and if you see me and you don't move and I'm like, excuse me, and you just stay there, I'm, you know, I'm going to roll over your feet, you know, like, or give you a good, uh, yeah. Ricky Williams, you know, <laughs> give you a stiff army out of the way, you know? Hey, uh, I just wanted to bring to light what comes up when I type in fat accommodations. Yeah. Fat mermaid accommodations? Fat olive accommodations? Fat duck accommodations? Oh, that's my far. Fat cats F for, uh, at albufera accommodation? Fat pig farm accommodation. <laughs> what about uh, fat air, <coughs> fat airline accommodation? Yeah, fat airline accommodation. Fat flyer is you know. Fat flyer. No, no, fat airline accommodation right there. Yeah, just search that. Uh, go down. I think yeah. it might be that right, that the lady. top one. Oh, yeah, oh she's like God. the one, right? The spokesperson for this movement. Yeah, nobody. Uh, no YouTube. No YouTube. We can't do YouTube. We're gonna get. Gonna get shit on. Maybe TikTok, yeah. Let's see what this. So you wanna hear my hot take on plus size travel and why I think every plus size traveler should get a free second and even third seat on an airplane? <clears throat> then you better keep watching and sign my petition to make some real change. Let's just state facts. Plus size travelers need more space. Uh -huh. And many people agree that plane seats are too small, even Me. for the average size person. Yeah, I agree. As a plus size traveler myself, I know how uncomfortable and unsafe it can be to squeeze into a Turn tiny the Bluetooth, airplane seat. The Bluetooth we are down. not asking for special treatment or luxury accommodations. We simply want enough space to travel comfortably and safely without fear of being discriminated against because of our size. Mm -hmm. It's truly that simple. If you agree that every traveler deserves to fly comfortably and without fear of discrimination, then go ahead and please sign my petition and share it with everybody that you know. Let's work oh, the together fats. to make air travel more inclusive and accommodating for everyone. That is wild, dude. Yeah. I like so how does that make you feel on the inside? Well, what is it? What does a actually disabled person feel when they hear somebody who's like kind of how much of that is kind of like they're disabled because they choose to be at a certain point. Like obviously yeah. people that are obese have genetic issues and I understand there's a lot of issues there. Yeah. I have obesity in my family and stuff, so I get it, but, um, and I'm not trying to, you know, shit on fat people as fun as that can be sometimes, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, it's like, I, I, feel, I feel like, uh, it's stepping out of line yeah. to say I'm disabled. I need yeah. accommodations. And it's yeah. like, how does that make you feel? Um, uh, I, annoyed yeah no i, I want to like maybe trip them and then watch them struggle to get up you know but i don't know like because i've been on the ground like struggle to get up you know like 
figure it out, you know? <laughs> like, you have to yeah. figure it out. We're like, really, yeah. you know? Like, hey, um, can, uh, can I call a n- number? You know, just imagine me in the middle of a field, you know? <laughs> like, without any sidewalks, without any, like, <laughs> modern technology. You know, I'm not going far, you know? Like, hey, uh, guys, I need some sidewalk, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, I could get out of there, you know, if it's a field. Is there a ramp around here? I know, exactly. It's not coming, you know. you got to yeah. get up off of the ground, you know. And if you're that fat and you can't get up off the ground, that's not on me, you know. Like, right. My my point of, like, feeling sorry for people is, like, I mean, I do have empathy. Is that what empathy is? I don't know. I'm not that smart, you know. Empathy is feeling, I believe, you can you can vocab check me here. I think empathy is when you can relate some what someone's feeling and sympathy is when you feel bad for for how they're feeling but you can't relate it's yeah. a, the the difference is within whether or not you can relate yeah i was good at okay it's the only thing i was good at in yeah. school no I, I like you know oh wait here we go there is one big difference between empathy and sympathy empathy involves feeling what someone else feels while sympathy does not yes so i was correct so you're you feel sympathy for the or do you you're maybe somewhere in the middle yeah i don't know you know like I first of all I don't want to be fat cuz that would be bad for me, you know? Yeah. And like my Yeah, it would be bad for me, you know? It's hard it'd be harder to roll around if I was fat. I couldn't well, go as many places. I couldn't fit through that door. Think about if I had a double ass like that lady, you know? <laughs> like that like that fat broad, you know? And it's like I'm not getting through that door, you know? There was a video of her or one of her kind, you know, like on an airline and she had one of those like double asses, you know? Not like Kim Kardashian, but like I've seen one, yeah. Like, right, and she's, like, struggling to get, like, squeezing through, like, a regular aisle, you know? Like, mm-hmm. the good point is, the good uh, is if they do get accommodations, like, the wheelchair or the bathroom will be actually, maybe I can, like, fit in it, because <laughs> I can't get in, I, I can't get in, like, a wheelchair or bathroom. Yeah. They're not, you know. Oh, speaking of wheelchair, I have another question that just popped. Dude, so many questions for you. you can I'm sorry. You want. I want, this is basically where, because I think, I think people that aren't in wheelchairs, we have a lot of questions. That maybe typically aren't appropriate to just walk up to a stranger in a wheelchair and go, hey, how do you fuck, you know? How do you shit? Yes, the but, wheelchair people will not be happy with this one, right. you know? So. Yeah. Well, you're you're like a – you are a, a, a different perspective on the wheelchair. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? You're a, you're a, a new, fresh take on – like, yeah. you know, you're you're giving us the real the real secrets, what goes on in the in the minds. Yeah, I don't date <laughs> wheelchair girls. <clears throat> oh. No, they're gross, This is man. the best podcast ever. They're gross. Like, okay, can you imagine – a relationship with like two of our issues coming together you know <laughs> that'd be like a full-time job managing that <laughs> shit you know ain't nobody got time for that i need a walkie you know i need a anyway no it's uh is that what you call them no well maybe but <laughs> when you're talking some, dirty to you sometimes no but um <laughs> no i like yoga chicks because they're bendable you know <laughs> Well, I, you know, I need some accommodations myself, you know, some <laughs> right. sexual accommodations. So So do you typically have sex in the chair? I have had it. It's very good actually. Chair wheelchair sex yeah. rocks? Yeah, absolutely. Fuck. Yeah. Cuz I think it or it rolls, yeah. <laughs> That's fucking <laughs> Write well, that down. No, I was kidding. Put on my brakes for that, you know. Yeah. Do you got brakes on that thing? Yeah, brakes are for pussies. No, I so do. So do you have... leave the brakes on while you're fucking, or do you? Can you scoot around the house? Is that like the wheelchair guy's version of like picking a girl up and like putting her against the wall? Is you like she's on top and you're kind of just wheeling around the house with her? Okay. Do you believe in synergy? <laughs> you know, do you believe yeah, in magic? Sure. Uh, because not like David Copperfield magic. Okay. Or like Chris Angel like magic. Energy. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. So the last girl I was with was. She was fat, okay? I gave a fat a chance, and it was a mistake. And I'm going to tell, <laughs> I'm gonna tell, you, I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. Because, okay, if she's on top, right, like, and, like, shit goes wrong, you know? Like, it's a logistical thing. It's like a safety thing. I need to be able to, like, pick someone up and get them off of me, you know? <laughs> and this was, like, borderline. And, you know, like, I was a little bit scared for myself. What, you know? what like, happened? No, I wasn't, well... First of all, she'd never seen the Chappelle show. Big red flag. Big you know? red flag. And so, Ew. yeah. Gross. And then, uh, no, she complained a lot about her, her family on our first How day. How fat are we talking here? I don't know. I did not weigh her. Although, uh, <laughs> dude, you should try to install like a weight a weight device on your thing, so you're like, step right up, you yeah. know, see if you <laughs> must be this low of weight to ride. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, my, I like I said, I gave a fat a chance. You know, I was like, listen, but how fat though? 
Well, I don't know. Uh, like, how big are we? Like, not. I, mean, I don't have to know her exact weight. Is but 380 just, a lot? No, I'm just. Uh, yeah. No. That's like bigger than Brock Lesnar. <laughs> she was not 380. Okay. That, that's a bridge too far. Mm -hmm. A bridge too far. But we're just so talking like a thicker chick. Yeah. Or, but it was beyond like thick. It beyond was, thick. It like, was. Maybe you're going to morbid obesity if you, you don't took turn a shit deep around. breath before you made that decision. You were like, "Yeah, she was fun though. She was cool. She yeah, was funny. Like we hit yeah. it off. You know." I was like, but "Okay." It was a safety risk. It yeah. was a flight risk. Yeah, I like at least like girls manageable. Like, cause like girls actually do love to like sit on my lap. You know, it's a like, perfect spot for it. You know, mm -hmm. it's, like, whether built, it's built-in game. You know, whether it's during sex or just just for fun. Just yeah, like just for quick, fun. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's cool. You know, have you ever done Santa Claus? Um, Obviously no. not a sexual thing, but have you ever done? Well, I don't, I, you know. No, I mean it's making me think. Is that what you're into, dude? Should we get Chris Hansen in here? No, I'm just kidding. But you could do. I mean, a, a wheelchair guy doing Santa Claus would be. That's you're already sitting down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I do love. Why like, is there not more wheelchair Santas? I agree. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, I'm, I was gonna write that. That's down. a holiday bit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> seasonal bits, Santa. dude. We're writing seasonal bits right now. That's what I do want to do when I come on here with like friends from the mics and stuff. Just like we're just here to. Spend. I had Zach yeah. Black on the other day. And we were I love just Zach. Looking up like fucking transgender body bodybuilders and stuff, and just there's some awesome ones out there. Really? Yeah, very convincing. <laughs> um, what was that one guy's name? Buck. Uh, fuck, I forget his name. It's probably in our search history. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, so there needs to be more black Santa Claus, for, or black Santa Claus, excuse me. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, well, there should be more black Santa. Right? Claus. Do we believe in diversity, or we don't? You know? I mean, there's no, there's, you know, there's no, uh, there's no evidence that Santa Claus was not black. You know what I mean? Well, I think his lack of pigmentation and vitamin D living in the North Pole. True, that could have something to do with it. Although, the, you know, the I think maybe the Moors are up there, like running around, <laughs> like doing stuff. You know, back. But there, there needs to be more wheelchair Santa Claus. Is what I was yeah, for, to, oh, what I sure. meant to say. Yeah. Because I've almost never seen that wheelchair yeah. Santa. No, I like speaking of that. Like my little nephew, I watch my little nephew a lot, and like he jumps up in my lap all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so it's like I like kids actually for their like their honesty because like sometimes they haven't seen a person in a wheelchair, you know. Mm -hmm. And like when I first got hurt, you know, like you were talking about like part of the recovery process yeah, earlier yeah, yeah. and all that. Sorry, kind I'm of bouncing stuff. all over the place. No, it's all good. Um, but um. You know, part of the recovery thing is, like, when you're in a wheelchair, like, I wasn't before. I've spent, like, half of my time, half of my life in a chair and half of my life out That's of a chair. That's got to be kind of crazy. Right. So, it's like I'm in this in-between world, you know, which is kind of cool, actually, because it gives me a perspective of both. And if you can kind of get in that brain or, yeah. you know, get in that – I mean, that's how I live my life, but it's, like – you know, helps me think about things, you know? Well, you probably also, like, strive to do things that you used to do. <clears throat> yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So, you're yeah, you're thinking about – when you were more able to do things and you're like, I'm going to well, try to as best I can to do shit the way I used to do Well, it. I never wanted to have sex with girls in wheelchairs, you know? So that's <laughs> been like a pretty consistent thing. Do you think, could you imagine if that was your fetish pre-injury? I know. You know what yeah. I mean? Could you imagine? That's got to be some dude out there who's able-bodied, who likes banging chicks in wheelchairs. Those wheelch and then could you imagine? Like, He's a wheelchair devotee. <clears throat> that's what they are. Okay. Do you think you'd be depressed at, or do you think you, it would be like, yes, like now I'm in the community? Like if you had, if some guy, if you were a guy that <laughs> was into wheelchair chicks and then you got injured, you're like, yes. Yeah, no, I don't think guys no. would, I don't think guys, I don't, I mean, I don't think they operate like that, you know? They're like, hey, <laughs> yeah, sex. So you've never hooked up with a wheelchair? No, I would. Uh, okay, what would this, that even look like? This is going to, because it happens, right? Yeah, of course. No, I, and I actually would date someone as long as they were hot, you know, because super hot, but in a wheelchair. Yeah. Because life is too short to not date hot people, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. At least that's what, what if I you just, like, do. loved her and she was so hot but she was in a wheelchair? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, okay. No, I'm down. You would get, like, the <clears throat> the most accommodated house ever. Just yeah, elevators like, and, yeah, dude. Have little kids in wheelchairs rolling around. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> It's like little dogs, those little dogs with their wheelchairs, you know, <laughs> the whole, the <laughs> whether, whether they were disabled or not, you know. Dude, it's like, uh, a, it's like a sitcom called The Wheelers. Oh, <laughs> oh. See, I think, okay, that, I'm actually against that. That's, like, <laughs> that's when inclusivity goes too far, you know. Oh, my God. Oh, my dude. God. Wheeling around. It's like a really shitty, yeah. like, theme song. No, I'm white. My my wife has to be black, right? Right. You know? Your we, kids are trans. No, trans Asian, you know? Yeah, transracial. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> this this month on CBS, <laughs> the Wheelers.
oh my god, we win every award. Starring you know? Jason Bateman. Oh my god, they're so brave. You know, like, and then they hear me talk, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh no, he's not one of the good ones. Do you know? know you're just like a grumpy Archie Bunker character, like in a wheelchair, though. You yeah. know what I mean? Your mom's yeah. always rolling around in here, no, trying no. to watch the game. I know. <laughs> you know. Tracking mud in the house. Can somebody put oil on your mother's wheels, please? She's squeaking up the up the 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 whole house. Hey Johnny, trip that bitch. Get her out of her chair. It's <laughs> fucked up. I can make these jokes. I have a pass, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean yeah. They give it to all of us. You're making them. I'm just riffing off. Of okay, you. cool. Yeah, cool. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. You give me my. You're giving me my, uh, my, my, this my is, handicap parking pass. This is par well. That is one of the benefits. You talk about. You oh know, yeah, let's yeah. Wheelchair privilege, you know, because it's a real thing, you know. Tell us about it. You well, know, you get great parking. I save a lot of money on shoes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's funny, and it's also true, you know. <laughs> Why? Because you don't use them that. Like, yeah, they never. Hit, they, they never hit the ground. They never hit the pavement. There's no. I mean, you can I, res the resale value on your shoes, probably. Yeah, I got right? some like dope ass. Like, I'm not joking. I probably bought them 20 years ago. You're like yeah. worn only only worn 10 times. Never touch the pavement. No, they never touch the pavement. Although, you know, my legs do. Like, my feet sometimes slide off of the foot plate. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I'm bouncing around and there's like rough. When you when you got a girl on top of you. Yeah, a fat. You know, <laughs> trying to dump me out of my wheelchair to fucking Kathy Bates me. <laughs> Oh hey, white. We're gonna keep. <laughs> this is my reparations, you know. Yeah. Like, oh no, you yeah. know, this is a mistake. She accidentally calls you James Con. And... <laughs> oh fuck! Damn it! I've actually thought about that. I'm gonna kind of... need to stay here. I've for... actually thought about that scenario. You know, like you Damn. go over to a girl's house and like you're relatively, you know, decent looking guy. Yeah. You know, like I know what I am. Whatever. I know that sounds whatever, but you're a good looking guy, dude. Yeah. Chick that wanted to look at me in a futon and keep me in a box and spin in my head, Dude, you know? Like, that's really weird. That's, that's a lot. <clears throat> yeah. And especially because the futon is like, that's an immediate, that's an immediate preference that, that, that it's an immediately disarming preference. Like the, her first thing, she's like, so I need you on a futon. You're like, okay, so I'm, I'm completely helpless. Right. <laughs> like, no, I don't like this at all. Well, ever, you know, there's comedians that are strapped, you know, and sure. just specifically in Texas. And I think I should be. Because of the guy who pulled the knife on me at Access. Oh yeah, I was there that night, but I left right before that happened. So yeah. what happened again? Um, there was like a homeless guy in the mic, just like walk, sitting at the bar, yeah. drink, drinking, watching. Yeah, he did four minutes actually. He talked about his diseased dick and like some of the street pussy he had fucked, and it was fucking wild. I can curse on here, right? This is not <laughs> censored. <laughs> anyway. yeah, I also you could talk about I street pussy. About, I smoked weed on camera. <laughs> I tripped the fat uh, to watch her squirm. <laughs> Can you imagine how funny that? I just makes me laugh, right? Just yeah. imagine a fat on the floor, like. No, but the but it's like, not funny unless it was a it was she was intentionally tripped by the guy in the wheelchair. That's what yeah. makes this is it makes it like it's like celebrity death match. Or I something. don't know. And it's like it's like you know crocodile versus bear. It's like you know wheelchair guy versus. Yeah, I'm going back to the knife guy, but like there was another machete. Zach actually said to me, he goes, "Where?" Because I, I was telling Zach about this, and he goes. Where are you hanging out with these people with knives? Because I went to go buy cigarettes at 7-Eleven up by my house. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy. There's a crazy. It, he's crazy. Okay. He was just standing in the middle of the parking lot. And it wasn't like late. You know, it was like 10 o'clock or whatever. And he was just like standing in the middle. And so I like, I just, you know, I'm, I'm downtown a lot. I see a lot of interesting people, you know. So I just like wheeled all the way around him, you know. And when I finished, um buying my smokes i was like about to wheel out and this guy had a fucking machete he first of all he had one arm and a machete and i'm not i'm not making that up he wasn't like actually threatening people with it he was like holding it up to the sky like fucking he-man you know mm -hmm. and I, I saw him like with the machete and like one of the other customers goes what's up with that guy and i was like i don't know like what do you want me to go ask him you know like <laughs> hey sir um <laughs> what do you think about criminal justice reform? You know, like, what do you think yeah. about that? You know, like, uh, no, like, so I just like, he was still in the, out in the middle and I wheeled out, you know, but the other knife guy at access, he was like a, he'd been drinking for hours and hours and I was downtown and I hit the access mic on my way home. And, um, that guy actually did four minutes and he was, it was funny. I'm not going to lie to you, but he was just, he was yelling at comics and a lot of comics just bailed. They're like, yeah. okay. Um, I'm he gonna... yelled at me. He ruined some of my jokes. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he, you know. He was giving everybody a taste. Yeah, well, he gave me a big taste, but, you know, <laughs> I, yeah. 
and I gave him a taste back. But um, no, he was just like yelling at me, and he was like, "You should quit comedy and or like yeah. quit or whatever." And I was like, "Oh, absolutely not! I'm staying up here for the whole four minutes. I'm not going anywhere." You know, and I was like, the worst part of that was I could not find the funny. And yeah. so, like, it wasn't that I was bombing, although I was bombing, but it was like all the other comics in the room were like staring at me. And I was like, oh my God, it was the worst bombing ever, you know? Yeah. Because I couldn't find the funny. I was trying to, right. like, you're like, I, actually, you're like, this guy just pulled a knife on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he, like, he was rustling down. He was like, I have three. He's like, I get more pussy than you. And. <laughs> I have three kids. He was yelling out at you. Yeah, I was like, like, dude. I know, cool story, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the book. yeah. And so he um, he said, I have three different children by three different baby mamas, and I was like, oh, I'm sure they're all going to be upstanding citizens, you know. <laughs> and he did not like that. Yeah. So he rustled around in his like bucket of despair. You know? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. It was yeah. like a basket that yeah. goes on the back of like a shitty a shitty dirt bike. Yeah, one of those like plastic milk crates. You yeah, know? and it had portable. like it had three smearing off ice in there. Yeah. And then like a couple a couple things that could be used as weapons. Right. Right. Yeah. And so he was like rustling down in there, you know, he he walked out, which is ironic, you know. Mm. And he, <laughs> he walked out and then a couple other com- like this is the funny thing about comedians is that there was a couple comedians like oh man we're totally very close to stepping in and helping you <laughs> and then like uh, we were totally very close to stepping I know in. and then the rest of them were like no man we're going to watch you get stabbed you know <laughs> yeah the was, honest like, ones i know like <laughs> No, we're that guy's frightening, you know. Like, yeah, exactly. We're not going anywhere near him, you know. It's like when, like, my parents uh, that we always had a thing because I live with my great grandma. Um, like, if there was a dead rodent in the house, or like, like, uh, you know, like a dead squirrel, like by the mailbox, we would yeah. always, we would be like, "Ew, gross!" Like, get somebody, get Graham, because like right. nobody wanted to deal with it. So we were like, my eighty-year-old grandma who lived through, you know, two world wars Great or whatever. She, right, right, yeah, she's right. like, I'll fucking get it. She went she out with a dustpan or whatever. I don't care about a dead rat. Right. And so they, but these guys were like, the wheelchair guy, you know, no, no. help us, I know. Help, I know. Get, you know, get him. We're right. just gonna let him get it. I know. You know what I mean? Right. They did that yeah. they did get boone yeah so he uh <laughs> so that homeless guy walked out and then he walked back in with a knife and then like alden and uh another comic like called the police you know yeah. they, he was the police came cool guy oh yeah no great great guy you know and um I'm sure the city of austin has a plan for him and we'll yeah. definitely not be seeing him on the streets anymore because we have a very effective way of you know, yeah. no, fuck that. Yeah, no, we don't. I'm sure he got out right away. Of course. If he ever went in. No, they, um, yeah, they took him to the drunk tank. The funny thing was you could, like, I was outside, like, talking to the other uh, comedians and, like, the, the people that own Access, you know, and they were, they're awesome, you know. Like, yeah. They gave him, like, a no trespassing thing mm-hmm. and took him, but you could still hear the guy in the back of the cop car because they did find him, you know. He was just yelling and screaming, and I was like, so that, that was it, but I did not get Dude. stabbed. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't get stabbed. Yeah, no, I not, I might need to be strapped. So you know? How did you get into doing stand up? So I've always had like an interesting, like funny way of looking at the world, you know, like just a way of making things funny. But you mean like it, since the accident too? No, like previously. Previously, you know, okay. I've I love making people like laugh so hard they cry, mm-hmm. you know, and just like going, like my family, my friends, you know, it's yeah. like a whole different thing until you get on stage, obviously. For but sure. like. I signed up like before the pandemic at like the old Cap City, which is mm-hmm. actually like down my house. And I went to an open mic with my mom and her husband. I mean, he's not my stepdad because I'm not acquiring parents anymore. You know, I'm 46 years old. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's Robert. I'm not you know? calling you dad. Right. You're right. fucking Robert for right. the rest of my life. Right. He's like, he's cool. You know, no, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know? I call me dad. I'm like, mm, how about I don't? You I'm know? not gonna call him dad. Right. He's like right. Will Ferrell from fucking <laughs> Step Brothers. Oh yeah, did you see that uh, Canalita wine mixer that they did? Like Snoop Dogg was like the DJ. No. Oh uh, yeah, they like did it. I think it was like some party, like one of Snoop's concerts or whatever, mm-hmm. and they brought out that Catalina wine mixer fucking song. Fucking Catalina wine mixer. I know. Mixer. And they, they both like it was uh, Will Ferrell mm-hmm. and John C. Riley, and they t- they tuned mm-hmm. it up. I know <laughs> that song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, getting into stand up. Yeah, getting into no. Um, so I signed up before, and so I went with my mom and Robert, not my stepdad. And um, I watched these open micers, and I was like, oh, these people are terrible. You know, like mm-hmm. I know I'm funnier than like nine. There's some funny people. Sure. No funny females, you know. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Wow. Whoa. It's the truth. Although, <laughs> that, was, that was so left field. Well, I know, but I mean, it's the truth. You are, Okay, it's the truth. Like, I don't. 
Here's a story about my. I was raised in a household where women were were always just as capable as men, brother. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> How many uh, female gar like garbage vays have you? I don't know. Seen right? I would, dude. A female garbage worker. I'd love to talk to one of those. Yeah. Or like I a, haven't seen one. Yeah, I'm just rolling around in the trash. You or know. like a steel Which worker. One of the boys? Or like a steel worker. Yeah. You know, electrician. Anyway. I, I love, but that my perspective on like female, there's a, like a lot of like, like once I like started like, hey, like all this stuff is like going on in your city and like getting into it. And I'm going to go back to the start. But like my mind, like it changed actually. There's a lot of like really funny girls. Uh, I, mean, I get that there's like a joke that women aren't funny. Yeah. <clears throat> and maybe I always just think that like when you're dealing with like a, like one, like a, niche or like a hobby or a sport you know whatever that's like male dominated like just more men are into it you know what i mean it's like okay well are they less funny or is it just less of them yeah you know what i mean and then also i've heard other people talk about this on podcasts and stuff and just kind of i get it myself is that like i feel like and i'm not trying to be a male feminist or an apologist here you know but it's like uh or i don't know if that's the right word but like like women kind of ha- have more to go up against when they're getting into a room they're going up on a stage absolutely like <clears throat> every guy is kind of like the first thing i feel like that g- subconsciously goes through a dude's mind is the looks right right or and i guess that's about any comic but it's more important i think it might be more important you know like when right. like uh, people might dudes might just go what you know what does she look like first thing right and right. then it's like is she going to talk about her pussy right away right? right a lot of girls just just like dudes do dick jokes you know what i mean right. it's, it's like and so they just have other things that like you know and i've heard other comics mention that like they have a hard time because it's like no group of like a room full of dudes doesn't want to hear a girl's opinion on certain things or whatever but you know I, the, the weird thing is like for me like i i guess i get that and i i would say like out of my favorite comics there you know when i was growing up there was a lot less of them that were female comics but especially living out here it's like you better not leave when a girl goes up or right. you, you should watch everybody because yeah. like 90 percent of them are funny dude <laughs> like, yeah you know what i mean yeah because they have to like they have to like uh they have to like te- they have to like prove it you know they're like testing it you know and so like one like local <laughs> that I, that i love uh, called the dragon is Leonardo Joni, you know. I don't know if I know. Her. Yeah, uh, she was at my the first show I ever did, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do want to get to like the start of the comedy, yeah, yeah, but yeah. like we'll I, I love Leonardo. She's hilarious, you know. And like Liz Splat, I've seen Liz Splat's crazy. I saw I love, a, that. I love a, her. A couple of uh, the last uh, <clears throat> Kill Tonys at the Vulcan uh, Roseanne bar was there. And she blew the. <laughs> One Dude, of, you know my one of my favorites. Oh, go ahead, finish. No, she blew the roof off of the place. Off man. of the mothership. Like no, this is the at, at the Vulcan. The Vulcan before they moved. Oh she yeah, She blew yeah, the yeah. roof off of the place. You I know, bet, yeah. And like Tim Dillon was with her one She's time. She's so funny. Yeah, uh, uh, Roseanne's crazy. Yeah. So uh, there's like a lot of like female comedians, but like going back to like when I you want me to like talk about when yeah, I yeah, started sure. is that. So I was like signing up. Like pandemic, I was like watching my nephew. You were like, "Wow, these female comedians suck." I'm going to go up there and shred. I'm no, just kidding. Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, the ones I saw at the open mic were not that great, you know. But like, yeah. since then, my mind has completely changed, mm-hmm. you know. And um, well, good back pedal, good back roll, dude. Actually, I mean, it hasn't, you know. They're... <laughs> no. Anyway, it's kind of changed. But so you like, signed up that night. Uh, no, I. I just went to watch. You oh, know? you just went to watch. Okay. And so, like, I like got into like Kill Tony during the pandemic a lot, you know. And I'd kind of mm-hmm. like seen clips of it before, you know, and like seen the show. But like, I, you know, I didn't wa- haven't watched all the episodes. But like, it's probably impossible to do that. But um, so I started watching the show, and like Michael Lair was on there. You yeah. Know? And he had ALS. Mm-hmm. Like Luke. Rest Gerg's, in peace, Michael yeah. Lair, the great Michael Lair. That motherfucker. So funny. That is how you go out. That is how you live. You, you go out. He that motherfucker went out on his shield. He went like seriously slinging jokes till the very end, facing his own death. You know, he backed out of his own death one time in Portland, where yep. you're from. You know, like yeah. And so like, what an amazing dude. I know. What it a just, crazy life, and it's so sad. Yeah, for sure. You know, <clears throat> absolutely. Because yeah. I I want to, you know. Yeah, I want to hear more of his shit. I like one of there's this funny thing on YouTube. I know we can't play it, but I think people should look it up. It's just like him. Because he was in, like, Second City in Chicago, right, with, like, Belushi and, like, not during that time, but, like, that's where Belushi and, like, Chris Farley were. Mm-hmm. And so he was, like, an improv guy, you know, it was, like, a theater guy. And then he started stand-up when he got his diagnosis. I think I have that right, of ALS, you yeah. know. 
and there's one of him it's just like him i think he like he may end up like taking off his shirt but it's just like it's called human shield michael lair human shield and it's just him talking about how much of a hero he is <laughs> because he like put him it's ironic you know but yeah. it's funny you know and like he gets into it and he starts like like talk- that's how he got disabled because he no like- no this before he was disabled oh, he was before. just like a, a guy on the street talking about how, how much of a hero he was okay. because he saw a minor crime and okay, yeah. maybe said something he's afterwards so funny. you know he's right, right even so. when he was like in the wheelchair struggling i saw i got i got the i was fortunate enough to be visiting here a lot when everything was moving here i came here like six or seven times before i moved here in june july of last year yeah and uh like every show I was at, he was going up. So I got to see a lot of Michael Lair. Yeah. And it's just like his brain was so all there. You know what I mean? Yep. He was, and it was feistier than ever because he was right. probably having to sit in the chair and deal with right. all that stuff. Right. And it had and to be. His he was body like, was just, you know, deteriorating. And, but his mind was still, you right. know, and he was writing jokes about how fucked up all this is. And <clears throat> he went on a rampage uh, the, when I first saw him of like just writing jokes about doing cocaine and like fucking hookers and stuff. And right. it was just so funny to hear that coming from somebody like who's having trouble talking because they're like disabled in a wheelchair but it's like yeah. like there was no but i don't think there's ever been somebody that like you know came with that like right ob- start- obscure you know yeah. like like a, par- a party a wheelchair party guy there was yeah. no guy that had right. wheelchair party comedy yeah he was like Lair- fuck- michael Lair was the best yeah he was like fuck weed give me pcp you know yeah, like exactly. just fucking saying yeah. wild shit you know i only so, got like, a little while to live i'm trying to go crazy like, i know yeah you well. know and i kind of feel that way that's actually so i was like he was in the process of dying and then the mothership was like opening and it was like it was being talked about. It wasn't open yet, you know, yeah. but it was like all of this comedy is like, you know, going on like is Ro- like Rogan had already moved here, you know, and it was just like but I was like watching Michael Lair and I was like, oh, shit, everybody dies, you know, like. And I've thought that I've thought about death before, you know, I've contemplated it. Not well, you should have could have. Right. You have to, you have to, you know, and so like. At least in my perspective, I think it's actually good for a lot of people to kind of think about it. And like, why am I doing shit? Does this matter? Yeah. You know, like, what? why am I just punching a random job? Like, why don't I have a, right. a higher goal? Or why am I not me? being a fucking better friend or like right. a better brother or like a better son or whatever? You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel like you think about that stuff more. Yeah. You so know, like, you'd be a better person. Absolutely. And so like, he was in the process of dying. And I was like, okay, like everybody dies. Like. Like and so I was like I I went to a couple of Kill Tony uh, show I went to a lot of them at the Vulcan I've been to a few at the Mothership the mm-hmm. tickets are harder to get you know I sign up but you know haven't been picked um, but the um, just the like the thought of like when is it ever like what are you doing like what are you waiting for when is it ever the right time right yeah. and so I would sign up for Kill Tony because my friends and everybody were like I would just have people like dying before the show right. and they're like si- like say that on stage and I'm like okay. And so I was like, but you have to be ready. I mean, you have to be like, have. You have to know what you're doing. Right? I fucking hate when people get up there and like, oh, I didn't expect to get up here. And like, um, you put your name in a bucket, dude. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But um, so like I started signing up more and more. And so that's how I, got, I actually got into comedy. It was like the thing like. Because you wanted to be ready. Kick so my, you went to open mics and yeah, stuff Yeah, like, right? like kick my ass was Michael Lair. That's like really? what I started started comedy like for serious because yeah. of him so that's awesome yeah seeing another dude kind of dealing with similar shit just yeah. being in the chair and yeah then, but I, what i and what i kind of just seizing the fucking time that he had left just using that time to follow his dreams kind of right right yeah. because everybody's like no one wants to hear it, but like everybody's gonna die you know like yeah. i don't want to i don't help you long healthy life you mm-hmm. know and harrison wherever he keeps going you know yeah um but um I don't know. Are we supposed to acknowledge anyone that's anyway? I don't yeah, it doesn't matter. It's cool. I like Harrison. It's yeah. cool. Um, but uh, you know, so like everybody's. I I want people to like live a long, healthy life. But you know, well, not everybody. But yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> not like Hamas, right? Yeah, I pulled out a Hamas. Jo- yeah, I've got some ridiculous yeah. jokes. But <laughs> yeah, save them for the mics, dude. Yeah, no, see if I'm they not. First. No, no, they they did. Oh, they work. No, they they <laughs> definitely do. You know. So. Um, since then, you've been rocking at it for five months. Yeah. Uh, Coming up on six, like five and a half. Have I you think. had yeah. some like moments where you really killed and you felt like you're fucking, like, yeah, oh, I'm fucking good at this. Yeah. What was uh, what was one of those like, or uh, or I guess maybe the first one. Do you remember your the first time that you felt like you were crushing it? Well, I mean, I was getting, 
like some of the mics are, I didn't know like at the very beginning, you know, so it didn't, definitely didn't start out like that, you know, because mm-hmm. like you go to a lot of these mics and they're like, they're other comics, you know, and yeah. they've, sometimes they've seen some of your stuff and like, I didn't know not to take it personally was that, you know, they're like looking down at their phone because they're like, go, they're going over their own set, you know, like they're getting right. ready and like, that's not, a, not everything is about me. That's actually yeah. something that yeah has helped me a lot in in life actually is i can't control everything else in in the world you know i can control me maybe a little sphere around me but that's about it you know and Mm -hmm. like when you try to get out of that you it it, for me at least i get in my head too much like oh so i just like try to focus on that and so like when i was kind of you know trying to control that but like at the very beginning these guys are like looking down at their phones and they're like and so i didn't know that that was like they're just getting ready but um one of my most favorite times was at access where it was like it's just an open mic but it was like there was an audience and there was the comics and it was like you know it kind of free flowed from the previous guy mm-hmm. um and it just it, it was it was a lot of I fun i love yeah. access mic yeah me too i've gone there a lot that, i've done i feel like i've done good in stand up like two times and they were both there yeah like it's just something about the <clears throat> i think it's because i can get relaxed in that yeah, that situation for some reason it's a cozy little room yeah the comics are paying attention more there than they do uh at other play like at sure. the duck where it's just a little crazier everybody's smoking outside and yeah. there's a big projector screen tv in there and yeah. shit and it's just like yeah it's a nice place zach uh black zach black and um alden really have a good mic set up over there yeah they're uh, two of my favorite one, one of my favorite one of my favorite mics yeah me too um going back to like recovering from the accident and stuff i'm just wanted to get some perspective here like sure. what is it like when was there a moment when they told you you're never gonna walk again no i can like i have so i have an incomplete spinal cord injury okay. and so it's like i have like good feeling below like um my level of injury so like i have like tiny movements and like a couple of my toes really like, okay so you can so- feel your legs yeah, not all the way, like deep, okay. pre- like deep pressure. If someone like squeezes Squeeze real hard, or like something's going on with my foot, you know, if it's like mm-hmm. facing the wrong way. I broke my toe one time, and like my foot was like spasming, it was like moving around, you know. It was like mm-hmm. my body was trying to tell me something wrong, and so I like took off my shoe, and like my pinky toe was like pointed the opposite oh way. Oh my fucking god! I know. You I didn't like, even really know. No, like- I mean I knew something was wrong, and I was like checking my feet. I was like. <laughs> Uh, I think that's broken, you know? Yeah. Like, so they just dummy tape it to your other toe. You know, there's yeah. nothing really can rehab. No. Like, rehab, I think. And also, you're like, let me check the, let me look at the checkbook because uh, this doesn't, this isn't bothering me that much right now. Well, exactly. Like, think about it. Like <laughs> I'm a, not really going to need that. Thing. I know. Think about if a doctor said that too. We've got, we've got a rehab plan for your feet. You know, I'm like, um, can we focus on other areas? You yeah, know? exactly. Like, how about you just give me that money directly? You know, yeah, like, or, yeah, exactly. Or, anyway, yeah. So uh, <laughs> like, I don't really need those. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I like my toes. I don't want to lose them. You know? But so but, they didn't tell you, look, Boone, you're not gonna walk again. Like they thought, you, or is it possible that you might someday? I can, I can walk. Yeah. After they do the experiments on people and you know guinea pig, other mm-hmm. people in other countries, Get an exosuit. Right. So it's like. um you know, uh, so I can walk, but I I would need like two like, like straight like braces essentially. Mm. And it's like I have walked before, but it's so hard. It's like my chair. And then is, especially after not doing it for so many years, you're yeah. gonna like you're basically have like, like bedridden legs or whatever. Like Absolutely. people like don't yeah for know sure. How, yeah, you'd have, you you yeah. have to like train yourself, like do crazy yeah like uh, rich people's uh, therapy. Yeah, right. they have like a they have like a community gym. There's actually a lot of people in wheelchairs, like that old school movie Murder Ball. Have you ever seen that? I mean, I think I did a lot. Yeah, time it's ago, fucking yeah. wild, man. And yeah. it's like the like that guy lives in Austin, I think so. Okay. I don't know him. Just Mark Zupan is his name. Okay. Murder Ball, it's a fucking badass movie. Yeah. And it's like we're it's like wheelchair rugby and these right. maniacs. Yeah, I, I think I've seen that, yeah. They actually he was on one of the jackasses and they put him they put a, a jetpack. Harrison's on, on it. They put a jetpack under his wheelchair and then flew him off of a ramp. I think I remember that. Yeah, it's fucking Mark wild. Zupan. Yeah, he's a fucking G. Oh you know? yeah. So he was like the he was on the U.S. Uh, Paralympic uh, rugby team, and these maniacs like yeah they just like <sighs> that's sick. What's wrong with him? Do you know what's his uh, um, what's his disability? He actually got a spinal cord injury as well, like in uh, Fort Lauderdale, I believe. He was in the. Be- 
he if I'm remembering this correctly, he got drunk in the back of a truck like and he wasn't driving. And so mm-hmm. he's like, oh, I'll just go pass out in the back of my friend's truck. They didn't know he was back there. <clears throat> they went down like a, a not embankment, but like a, a Florida, like in the I don't know the causeways, but like the shit. I lived down yeah, in Florida too, but like, right. so they're going like uh, where the uh, water is. Water, yeah. There's water in Florida, Boone. Right. And um, so they're going down, and they like, they, he got uh, flipped out, or like they got into a wreck or something. Flipped out of the truck. Right. And so he like he had to like stay on like a canal. So there you go. Oh my god. He had to stay on like a canal or whatever, and got a spinal cord injury. Dude, you know what would be interesting? Would be this is just an idea I just had. Okay. Would be. Um, because I feel like s- there's so many interesting people in wheelchairs. Yeah. Like, like there's a story to every every yeah, single sure. one of them, right? For sure. And it's like if you talk to people, let's say you had a podcast and you talked to other people and and figured out like wh- how they ended up, like just yeah. what's their story? You know what yeah. I mean? Before I, that's a whole that's a whole lane. Because now yeah. now I'm talking to you, I'm like, man, like everybody's got their own like story about yeah. how how they ended up there and like how they felt during after before you know do you uh did you but was there like a time though like where you figured that i'm gonna be in the chair you yeah know pretty I mean? early on you, you know just, like when you can't like what m- age were you i was 24 when i got hurt so it's <sighs> so like young. i um well i wasn't like <laughs> this is fucked up um but i when i was in the rehab hospital um <laughs> i I was in a halo, and so I couldn't do a lot of rehab, you know? And the, the rehab hospital, by the way, they get you ready to be in a wheelchair. So I was in, like, when I got hurt, they did some surgeries, got me stabilized. I think that was for, like, 10 days. There's, like, a the period in my memory. Right. I remember the day I got hurt, like, at work, but I, there's, like, a 10-day a spot where I don't – there's, like, a gap in my memory. Yeah. And it picks up when they're on, like, they're put, rolling me to, like, the metal, medical flight to, like, take me – to the rehab hospital no i'm and you woke up you're like where am i yeah i was like i it was hurt because i was, had a lot of broken bones and i was like being, bouncing on the right. gurney thing right and so but um, what was that like though real quick when you woke up and you were like where the fuck am yeah I? I was like i was on a lot of drugs you know so like i didn't really so you had the car accident and you black out yeah shot like right the impact or whatever yeah i wasn't breathing they a girl was out stealing street signs and she saw the accident, and like a good citizen, uh, she called the uh, EMS, and so they got rolled to my accident scene real quick. Damn, you know? yeah. which is good. You know, crime pays. But crime pays. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Well, it's just some kind of. You crime. owe your life to petty crime, dude. I do. Uh, <laughs> I I really do. It's the plus. You know, it's just one of those petty little criminals. Weird, yeah. Um. But so, when did you wake up right away, like the second time, like the first time from the accident? You get the accident happens, things go black. Yeah. You wake up. Ten days later. Ten days later. So you were in like a little coma, kind of medically induced yeah, sure. kind of coma. Oh yeah. my god! So you wake up and you're rolling on a gurney thing. Did you know in that moment? Do you can you remember if you knew like, oh, I fucking got in a car accident? No, but my mom had a. She has a book. She still has it, and she wrote down everything I said because I was fucking crushing in coma. And what I'm you not, were saying funny shit? Oh, dude, this there is this speech. Uh, Speech language person, okay? And so she comes by my room, and they're like, he has a significant brain injury, you know? Like, I had a horrible brain injury, you know? And everything's cool now, you know? But it got jostled around, you know? And so the speech lady comes by, and she's always going to have a horrible brain injury. She's like, hello, do you know who you are? And I go, my name is Boone. And, you know, just like... (laughs) And my mom and my dad just started fucking like cracking up laughing, you know, because I was you talking. Sounded funny, right? Because I was I was making fun of a. Oh, retarded, you were making fun of how she. My name is Boone. That's where I really said it, you know, <laughs> like making fun of a retarded person. I mean, I like. Re- <laughs> Look, okay, I'm like not retarded, retarded. I'm just like physically retarded, you know. But like, <laughs> yeah, you kind of do. You have a pass. That's a good. That raises some good questions. Do you right. have a pass? Exactly. I don't know. You know, maybe not. You know, but you could compete in the Special Olympics, though. Yeah, no, could I'd, you? I'd win. But could you? Can't it can't can't isn't there like wheelchair about or is it all mental mentally disabled? I don't I don't know. I really haven't gotten into deep into that world, you know. Now I need to know. So, but yeah, so I was like I was <clears throat> making jokes and like I the Pope uh Pope John Paul II, God rest his soul, you know, fuck communism, <laughs> you know. Uh, that part of like I don't know about the Catholicism part, you know, and the hiding of the whatever, you know, but whatever. 
Um, I said whatever twice. It's very gay. And um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. All right, dude. But he was in. How many te- podcasts have you done? Two. All right. This yeah. is number three. No, this is my second. Oh, cool. You're anyway, doing great, dude. Yeah, I'm just fucking. You're doing great. All right. Um, this we're just friends hanging we're out, just man. Chilling, yeah, man. No, That's no, all we're doing. Around. I'm just vibing. I know. I just you know you hear it in your head. You know, like yeah. whatever, whatever. No, it's did you just really don't say don't worry about it. Um, that's no. we like the raw organic stuff. Yeah, so but he, anyway, he was the Pope was in uh, Denver, and I like I made up the story that I told one of the nurses that I was, you know, I was injured in the Pope's motorcade. You know, <laughs> and <laughs> you don't tra- remember any of this? No, but my mom wrote it all down, and she read it back to me. I was like, "That's fucking Dude, awesome." The yeah. accident, it's your origin story. It is. Oh my god, it really the is. The accident made you a comedy superpower. Yeah, I think it did. Actually, oh my god, yeah. you were yeah. in. A, he was in a coma for ten days, killing. In the war, yeah. you know, he I was, was killing in the ICU. I was. I didn't know it by the way. <laughs> oh my god! It was like subconsciously, dude. and so, your last name is Blocker. Yeah, but is your first name really Boone? Yeah, Boone Blocker. Yeah, dude, Boone Blocker. you are a handicap superhero. Well, I don't know about that. You are. I don't think the other gimps would uh, claim me. You know, like, <laughs> I, I'm not good in. The, I'm not good in that world. No, it's it's cool. I have a lot of street cred. Yeah, but um, no. So when I was in the rehab hospital, so after I got out of that hospital where the I trauma that speech lady never came back. By the way, she was like, "I'm never coming back to this room." You know, <laughs> you like, made fun of her. yeah, I walked her. I walked. <laughs> you walked. I, her, I walked her. Dude. Like right. Jason I, Rouse. I, right. Like, <laughs> see you later. Right. Yes, dude. I did. You That's did. a true story. There's like no exaggeration. My name is Boom. I know. What's your name? I know. Well, because she was talking to me like a moron, you know, like right. fuck you, you know. Yeah. I Do didn't... you know who you are? Yeah, bitch. You know, get yeah. out of my room. You know. <laughs> Paying your salary, no, I'm just fucking... Um, Dude, that's fucking amazing. Yeah, so when I was in the rehab hospital, I was in that halo, and I couldn't do a lot of rehab. Can you look up the halo thing? The halo, uh, how, what would you look uh, it up as? Because you've been talking about it. I want to Halo it medieval torture device. No, uh, no, halo, no. Halo... Surgical... Yeah, surgical neck... Halo neck thing. brace. Yeah, surgical neck go. brace. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so when I was in the rehab hospital, I couldn't do a lot of rehab because I was in the halo, and so I was like just doing basic stuff. And someone like sent me a box of stuff and had like a cardboard insert, and so I wrote uh, "Will work for legs," and I rolled around the hospital with that. And <laughs> <laughs> I still have that sign, by the way. I was like, I'm never gonna throw it away. Yes, because it's fucking awesome, you know. And the yes. people that knew me get my sense of humor, you know. Right, and they're like, right. Oh my god, that you're, that's fucking hilarious. So, so from the get go, you were making a joke about everything. Absolutely, that's it's, so cool. It's the only. It's the only way. Like, did you real? Did you have like a moment where you were like? Like fuck, I'm never like the, I'm like that depression that we all think like if if a doctor told me I was never gonna walk again, like I feel like what what you went through is more likely what happens. But I feel like for somebody that can't empathize, yeah, right. I still don't know the difference. For somebody by the that way. can't, well, that <laughs> yeah, well, that can't, I read that and I was like, oh no, just, one ear out the other. No, no, but uh, empathy is when you can feel what somebody else feels. So I don't know how it feels to be told I'm not gonna walk. Okay. You know what I mean? But I can sympathize. And so for people trying to sympathize, you're like, man, that would be terrible. Like, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. I would be so depressed. Did you have a moment where that came in and you were like, fuck? And then you're like, well, better start just making jokes about it to yeah. like, but you know. I don't better. know if like I had that moment. It was like, it was like a natural thing just to like have comedy and like humor, like to like, heal, to deal with it, to you know, it, just yeah. to get you through. I think it was like the, the very first, like, if I had to like psychoanalyze myself, you know. Um, but like, it was like at the very, po- like when I was really hurt, you know, like I needed that, I needed that humor to like laugh and like everything's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, it was probably towards the end where it was like, um, you know, or like later you know, towards the end, yeah, L- later when I, um, the end, Damn. this is the end anyway. Um, but you know, it's probably later when like, oh shit, like this is my life, you know. I'm gonna like, be in, yeah. So yeah, you, ha- so right. there was a moment afterwards yeah. where you, where it's kind of yeah. settling yeah, in, yeah, for sure. It's starting to hit you that you're like, yeah. fuck, I'm gonna have to fucking wheel around. I'm gonna have to bang chicks in this wheelchair. When, how quick did that thought come in? You're right. Like, can I still use my dick? Right away. Was that the first thought? Absolutely. You know, and I can still use my dick, which is awesome. You know, it's did cool. it get did it get bigger from the whole experience? No, but you know, metaphorically speaking, right. Absolutely. Yeah, you your know. balls got bigger. Yeah, it's like big dick energy, but like wheelchair dick reality, you know? Like that's <laughs> something I've been <laughs> fucking around with, you know? I get like ghost boners, you know? I'm like I look down <laughs> I look down on my dick and like is that a bit ghost no, boners? Yeah, I'm like yeah, it is. I'm like I'm part of one, but I'm like I, I seriously because like, I look down on my dick sometimes and like really dick, like that that's what got gotcha, you, you know? Yeah. Like, 
Because there's like no brain part to it, you know? It's like just a, Crazy. my dick, you know, reacting, which is awesome. I love reactions from my dick. You yeah. Know? You're like, you, we still got it, brother. Right, right. <laughs> no, there was a, no, a, a girl, like, she was like my first uh, girlfriend, um, and she came to visit me in the rehab hospital, you know? And like, she was like, we didn't end up like dating or whatever. We're still cool. She was like a husband, a couple of kids. She's awesome, you know? Um, but uh, like, you know, it was like, like we had like serious conversations after that. Not like we want to date, but like she made me feel like okay, there's like there's everything's gonna be okay. Like yeah. maybe not r- right away, you know. But like oh, this is still, you know, a cool chick that likes you. You know, like she's not, not gonna leave you because you're right disabled or whatever. Yeah, we weren't together, you know. Oh, but I yeah. was like, it was just interesting to like. She was my previous girlfriend, and she like she heard about my accident. And she like she came and visited. Yeah, you. she came. That's from, cool. from Texas, you know. Nice. So like that meant a lot, you know. That was yeah. cool. That was a cool. Oh, yeah. And that was plus people. She was a cute you chick. need good people to get you through shit like that. Man. Absolutely, man. Could, I could not imagine. Yeah, support network is everything, you know, for sure. Yeah, I can't believe you were joking about it the whole time. That's so funny. Yeah, and it's so is that your origin story. Dude. <laughs> it is. It's fucking awesome. It really is. You were in a coma, just dropping bombs on people, Power. dude. I walked a lady. He walked a lady. You made I'm fun never, of her room. I'm never coming back to this room. That like, boom blocker, he's a he's mean. He's I rude. What are you gonna do? Yeah. I'm fucking in a coma. And you're you know? like you were already wearing the like, what's up, bitch? Like, yeah, yeah, like I'm I'm just saying, what are you gonna say? I right. can say whatever I want. Exactly. I'm untouchable. I know. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Um what do you have any other like notable stories about either like a time where like you weren't accommodated or like people were because there was this thing hang on let me see if i can still pull this up uh there was a thing that i just saw recently i was doing a little research uh wheelchair news dude <laughs> that could be your wheelchair podcast news, dude okay. beep, 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 beep. boom blocker with wheelchair news you yeah. know <laughs> at nine it would either be the most successful thing ever <laughs> or no one would watch it and they're like ba- like this guy is not a good. Today's story will put a, we- a stick in your spokes. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a bunch of stupid puns. I no, I was there was another wheelchair guy like last Monday, and I actually wanted to fight him. He was a he was an asshole. Dude, this one right here. Check this out. Disabled man drags himself off a plane after Air Canada fails to offer a wheelchair. Fucking Canada. No, but like, how boss is this guy's energy though? Where he's yeah. like, he's like, oh, I, oh, yeah, we'll have a wheelchair. Hey, everybody, pull your phone out. I'm getting off this plane. Yeah, and he just fucking just like, like, uh, what, uh, like, I'm not a Star Wars guy, but at the end of that one Star Wars movie where he's just walking the Darth Vader before they reconstructed oh, yeah, yeah, him, gotcha. Anakin, he's like, I will get you. You know, it's like he's just yeah. clawing his way out of uh, out of a fucking airport. Rodney Hodgins. Rodney Hodgins. Shout out Rodney. A hardware salesman, dude. So he's a hardware salesman from British Columbia. So he's just like a tough dude. You know what I mean? All right. He's like, I fucking sell hardware. Love there it. wasn't time to get a wheelchair on board before the plane had to prepare to for takeoff. Bullshit. There's always time. Yeah. When the attendant said Hodgins would have to pull himself off the plane alone, at first the couple thought he was joking. Yeah. But then she repeated the, equ- the request. I said, of course I can. I'm in a wheelchair. I can't walk, he told the Canadian press. He was forced to use his upper, upper body strength to haul him off uh, past 12 rows of seats, his wife holding up his legs. Wait a minute. So she she was holding him from behind as he- I'm doing that kid. As like, he, what like, is it? The wheelbar- was, like the wheelbarrow races just doing when you're the, a kid, right? He, he, yeah, yeah. I fucking hated those yeah, things, dude. man. He, yeah, it's Although I'd, be, I'd kill at that. I'd be like the gold medal winner, you know, for sure. Dude, so fucking Rodney's buff as shit, dude. Yeah, for sure. Dude, but he's a. Uh, that's a crazy image. Where's the fucking cell phone footage of that? Oh, but don't don't worry. Too. The uh, the company acknowledged uh, Hodgins received inadequate support. You know, so it's all cool. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. it's it's. Fun. They're suing their ass for right. sure. Yeah. That is crazy. I don't know. Like in terms of like accommodation, I don't know. They offered him a two thousand dollar. They offered him two thousand dollar flight voucher. <laughs> but he said the compensation wouldn't fix the problem of how they failed to do their disability. Uh, they failed its disabled past. Yeah, that's a lawsuit, right? Yeah. Oh, two thousand bucks in in meal vouchers? No yeah, thanks. No. Damn. Yeah, fucking. That would be you though. You would be like, I'm getting off with this fucking yeah. plane. My name is Boom Blocker. I don't know. You would have said you would have called the flight attendant fat or said something. No, I might have been like, Hey, where what city are we going to next? You know? Like let's go on an adventure. Yeah. You know? 
you would have been like, I hope you've been working on your fucking la- right. weightlifting because you're you're carrying my ass out of here. Yeah, for sure. Jesus Christ. Uh, but any stories like that for you? Anything you've dealt with like in the so you're 46. Yeah. So you've been in the chair. I'm bad at math. 24. It, so yeah. almost 20 years. Yeah. 20, or over 20. 22. 22. Yep. But but gonna be 22. I think. I think it's like 21. Damn. So. So anything in 22 years where you were just like these motherfuckers um a bunch of like i used to do a bunch of uh like work for the city of austin i was on a bunch of like boards and commissions you know back when i still had hope for the future and um it's all it's all over now and um tim kennedy and joe rogan they really bummed me out no it's, (laughs) it's fine um but no it's like i was doing a bunch of like policy work like local politics you know and Mm -hmm. i was like i was you know like Actually, I got, I was actually like great. Another thing that like really helps me is like being grateful, you know, like I'm grateful to be alive, you know? Yeah. So this whole, you think about that a lot? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I bet. You know, and like being like grateful to be able to like do what I'm doing, you know? And, um, but there's like, there's tons of comedy. Grateful to have a good attitude, man. Yeah. Because a lot of people have probably in in the wheelchair have like a life is, uh, my life is fucked and I have horrible luck or whatever. You know what I mean? And then they put that, they put that on other people and they like, and I have like, I've gotten mad before, you know, like um, I stayed with my mom after I, like before my uh, apartment was ready back up and well, they told me, okay, Boone, when you fly alone or, you know, when you take your first airplane ride alone, don't fly alone. So, you know, I flew alone. And they're like, okay, don't live alone. I'm like, of course I'm going to live alone, you know? But, like, before my place was ready in Colorado, I stayed with my mom, you know? And, like, that was, like, a lot of, like, sin- like sitting and contemplating. I love my mom. I talk to her almost every day. She's mm-hmm. here, 76, fit, you know? Nice. Not fat. And um, <laughs> yeah, she's awesome. You but a hot yoga mom, dude. She's, like, 76, Taylor. <laughs> Plus, she's married to Robert, you know? Yeah, sorry, so, Robert. Robert's got that on lock. Yeah, that's someone who will never ever listen to this, you know. Ever. Yeah. So anyway, um, no, no, my mom was cool, but she probably caught the brunt of that, you know, like someone yeah. like lashing out or whatever. And it was like, you gotta like check yourself, you know. Like that's not that's not about that's not them, you know. They're not disabled. They didn't do anything to like hurt right. me or whatever. These people like love me and are trying to help me. So you gotta like get your like your shit square. You Did know? you have to deal with a lot of regret where you're like, if I just would have got a hotel or if I would have just not? Nah. Like, have you thought about how to deal with any of that? No. Um, thankfully, like I met some people that um, I have a, a joke about my friend Tony that um, that killed him. He he jumped off of a bridge and he did not was not successful. Oh, no, and then so he paralyzed much. himself. And so I like no. I met him in the in the rehab hospital. He since. He went back to the same spot actually, and killed himself. Oh you know? no! Yeah. Finish the job, kind of thing. Yeah. Never Jeez. give up on your dreams, man. <laughs> you know. And uh, <laughs> Dude, yeah, you couldn't resist. Oh no, I can't. That that is. I haven't pulled out that bit in a while, man. But it's. Uh, I did that, by the way. I, that was one. Got me, dude. That was that was one of the first. You know, like a lot of times when people kill themselves, they're like, they don't think about the hole they're gonna leave in people's lives. You know. Or in Tony's case, the hole he left at the bottom of that ravine, you know, <laughs> like uh, so. Yeah, Is I know. A good friend of yours. Yeah, but I mean, he would have liked these jokes. He would have. He would have liked them. Yeah, maybe not in the in between when he, but you know, like he was in a lot of pain, you know. Right. And that was where I was like going is like people that like hurt themselves and they like killed one of their friends, you know, like that wasn't on my brain, you know, and it yeah. was like I was so thankful of that, like. Everything that happened that was like my responsibility and like thank God you didn't hit, hit, hit anybody else. Yeah, that would have been the worst. Right, right. or like a family, you know, like yeah, I fuck. just because it had, it has to weigh on you, you know, at yeah. least it weigh on me, you know. And yeah. so like maybe that's why a lot of people drink and do drugs or try to get past shit like that. I don't I don't yeah. know, you know. But um, I mean I do know that. Right. Not just that, but like other things as well. But you know, it's like um, no, like being grateful. Like okay, like. I'm yes, I'm paralyzed, but I'm I'm still alive, you know? Like I'm a lot better off than like someone that needs like an attendant 24 hours a day, you know? Right. Can't do anything for themselves, you know? Or and like my like, my cousin who was from the neck down. Yeah, that's rough, you know? It's yeah. a rough life. It's super rough, you know? So like yeah. that's what helps me is like being grateful for like <clears> There is sh- a lot to be grateful Absolutely, for. Absolutely, you know? Yeah. It's just not the way it was before, but I can't what can't change that, you know? Like what am I going to 
And it's so interesting because there's so many people with so much there's people that have all of their working limbs normally that are like upset. Everybody has their thing they're yeah. upset about or going through or whatever. And it's not to discount anybody's yeah. or try to measure dicks or whatever, but it's like, there's a lot of people that could be a lot more grateful for what they got. And maybe their problems aren't as catastrophic yeah. or maybe they're more in their control than they think. You know yeah. what I mean? Absolutely. It's like, well, your attitude is always in your control. You know, it's amazing what you can accomplish with like, Hey, I'm just cool. I can do it, you know. And yeah. then, I mean, I can't do everything, you know. Like, I'm not gonna play in the NBA, you know. Like, it's Dang not, gonna, it. not gonna happen. You were working so hard at that. I know, you know. But you know, there's a lot of things I can do, so that's sort of try to focus on, you know. Yeah. Um. So no disrespect, huh? In 22 years, you've had a di a, a handicap disrespect free. Oh, the most disrespect I've gotten in the last from comics. Absolutely, <laughs> not even, not even, not even but that's close. That's all in good fun, dude. Yeah, um, no? although mm, some of it is, you know. Yeah, but no, that was that was the the cool thing is that I I have not like because I would like I'm enthusiastic, you know. Like I yeah. love comedy. I've watched a lot of shows, you know, and mm -hmm. so like I would sit close. You know, like, right. and people recognize it and like point it out, you know, hey, wheelchair guy, you know, like yeah. whatever, you know, which is fine, you know? And so it's like, but like, no, I think some of it is like definitely, yeah, you know. Can you see why? Cause it doesn't, it doesn't fuck with you. Like you like, you don't, do, people do get like kind of offended. People in wheelchairs, if you make a wheelchair joke at them and you're trying to be funny, like they won't like it a lot of the times, right? Yeah. But like, so like, do you think that has to do with maybe like the, it's just kind of what that person's going through with their attitude, like we were just talking about. Or do you yeah. think it's just kind of like dependent on their what got them put in a wheelchair? You know what I mean? Like yeah. their story, kind of like yeah, maybe. I don't know. Because it's definitely not something like I was making some jokes with you today on this podcast that I wouldn't make. I have other friends that I I actually have a couple wheelchair friends, dude. Here we go. You no, know, it's like yeah, it's like the guy that I got it's wheelchair like, friends. Yeah, it's like uh -huh. the guy that it's like the guy that's like I have black friends, right. but right. it's like I got wheelchair <laughs> friends. Uh -huh. I have a few friends right. in a wheelchair, right. dude. Yeah. No, but like I wouldn't necessarily. I don't know them as well, or right. or I, they're not comics, so I wouldn't make a, a. You know, I've seen you joke about yourself, and people joke at you at open mic, so yeah. it's like I know it's on the table. But I feel like that's not. I'm not gonna go up and start cracking jokes at somebody at a wheelchair. Yeah. you know what I mean. It's just I wouldn't not, either. Right? You yeah, know? that other wheelchair guy. Was well, you might. About, well, <laughs> I would. You know, I'll be nice to them. You know, but when they start being a little bit cunty, you know, like <laughs> I don't. Yeah. No, like wheelchair fight club, you know? Like yeah. I really I there was another there was a funny comic from uh LA and he was in a wheelchair and he had like these anti tipper bars on the back of his wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Cause I can pop wheelies. I popped wheelies on stage a couple of times Dude. and it fucking kills, you know? Yeah. Like you're faking it, you can't do it. I'm like, okay. Like <laughs> you know, and it yeah. killed. But, you know, he has these he had these anti tipper bars on the back. And he pulled him off, and he was like, I'm Wolverine. I'm going to fight, you know, the other guy in the chair, you know. And he was like, no, I, I actually got shot, you know, like a drive-by or whatever. And then so I got up there, and I was like, surprise, surprise, you know. Like, I'm the guy that shot him, you know, and just so I have <laughs> people to hang out with, you know. Yeah. Like, so. You were trying to make a joke. Of course. It, yeah. it, that killed, by the way. Yeah. You know. Like, he liked it. Yeah, but it's like seeing two, like, demented leprechauns at, like, both ends of the rainbow, you know? Like, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> sometimes when there's two of us in a room, it gets a little bit squirmy for yeah. me, you know? Like, yeah. okay, there's only supposed to be one of us. No, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, exactly. Hey, I'm the wheelchair guy right here. What are you doing? This yeah. is my turf, huh? I know. <laughs> well, I've actually... Like an old mob. I know. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Oh, another guy in the chair, huh? You mm. gonna come in and steal my thunder, no, no, huh? Pay your protection? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna fuck your wife. Yeah, exactly. What right, that... I don't think you better keep those tipper bars on because I'm going to flip you. Oh, my God. I really want to, you know. Dude, I found a video. Here, let's watch some stuff. Wait, this is we're looking at this thing. Was this what you uh, had? Yeah. Basically the same thing. Yeah, this, look at uh, that chick, man. She's, I think she's faking it. Look how like, exaggerated <laughs> her neck is. She's definitely doing that for the camera. You know, for the court pictures? Yeah. Oh, my God. Look, I'm so hurt. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She's a mountain biker in an accident. It's probably bad. Man. I don't know, man. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying I'm it, he said, dude. I'm around. not buying it. No, I just had her head's at a weird angle. Like <laughs> yeah. She's posing, you know? This is what you had, though. Yeah. Oh, here's the drilling thing. So this is what they were screwing into your head? Yeah, so I took those. Why is uh, this not, uh, this, is this you're not like, working? You're like images. this one. So I, when, they, when those finally came out and they had to uh, fuse my neck together, there's like four titanium bolts. And um, I got them like, there's like a machine shop inside mm -hmm. of 
the rehab hospital. He's the guy that like fixes the chair. He's can do anything. He's another guy in a chair. And I have like a demented sense of humor. And so like they were making us do like arts and crafts, you know, like, yeah. oh, you can uh, press dead flowers into a candle, which is <laughs> fine. I, you know, I'm, I'll make it. I'll do yeah. some arts and crafts. I'll humor you. But I got those bolts cut off and then I pressed them into a candle and like on like two sides of it, you know, just Whoa. a reminder. And so that was the craft. You still that have I, that? I gave one to my mom and one to my dad. <laughs> These are the bolts that were in my cranium. I know. So. Look at that. So that's what you had on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so that your body's trying to like push that out all of the time, you know? And so like I was saying before, they come around like every week with like a little Allen wrench and <laughs> like inside. It's wild because you can hear it inside your head. Squeaking like it's going through drywall. It is. Squeak. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, it's wild. Why is this guy dressed like Santa Claus? I don't know. It's pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, here, let's. What, what? How long have we been going, Harrison? Yeah, 134. 134, dude. Really? A quick hour and a half. Easy. Let's watch some stuff and hang out for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, Pennsylvania man. Can we watch that? Hang on, hang on. So I have some stuff here. Okay. I did. You brought something up that I looked up. Okay. Looks, see, I looked up some shit here. Hang on. Uh, Please be wheelchair fight club, dude. Well, you mentioned that you wanted to flip somebody. I saw a video, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it. Okay, I would date both. Of, well, yeah. Would you date these chicks? The one on the left's a little bit heavy for me. Look at her pooch, you know. This one? Yeah. You have two highest standards for a guy in the for a guy in a chair, dude. I no, I'm just kidding. my record would disagree. Yeah. You know? yeah. No. yeah. Yeah. No, you're no. They're both very attractive. I would date both of them. No, there's like a wheelchair paunch thing, you know? Like oh, so oh, th I get what yeah. you're saying. So it's a wheelchair thing. There's yeah. a wheelchair pooch thing that happens, yeah, well, and you're trying to avoid that. Yeah, you're just like... You're so you want a chick... If she's in a chair, she's got to have a six-pack. You want a, like a ripped chick in a chair that's doing like... She's got to move around, you yeah. know? We're going to do, do different positions, you know? <laughs> well, we are. You what know? are the different positions? I was trying to get to this earlier. So you yeah. have... We already have one locked in our head, which is just you in the Me chair. Me on a sex no, swing? No, no, you in the chair. Like... From up above, you know? You is have a swing? You, is that what you have in your head? No, no. They the, have those, by the way. The thing I have in my head is just you in the chair, yeah. pants off, and, and she just jumps right on you. Straddles you. Yeah. Or just turns around and does the thing where they're kind of standing yeah. up. Maybe she uses, do you have like arms, armrests on the chair? No. No? Well, no. she grabs some part of the chair, grabs you, and just kind of, or, and then so now is, is. Reverse cowgirl is what? The best. Okay. So, I see. Sometimes in my my body, gets you really do need like a fit yoga chick. Yeah, to really. Yeah, this is a practical issue. You know, I know <laughs> I sound like a man whore, but like, in, the, in terms of the fats, it's a safety issue. You know, in terms right. of the yogis, you know, this mm -hmm. is a logistical issue. You sure. know, like I, you know, I need yeah. my accommodations. You know. Yeah. Okay, this is where you asked me before. This is where I haven't been accommodated. You know, <laughs> like not. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, no, let's go. <laughs> where have you not been accommodated, dude? Tell, now you have to tell us. Women. No, it's but it's fine because you know they can have their preferences too. You know, and it's like because some like it's funny because like you put pictures of your wheelchair like on like a dating app, you know, and they obviously swipe right on you. And you know, I'm just a pretty face, you know, objectified. You know, <laughs> it's it's fucking rough out here. You know, and like, it's is like, that Jason Bateman? And, uh, and, uh, Did something happen to him? <laughs> What's wrong with that man? I liked him so much in Ozark. <laughs> exactly. No. So they swipe right on you, and then you're like your other pictures, like in a wheelchair. I'm like, oh, are you in a wheelchair? I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm sitting in it. You know, yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I'm in it. You know, like, who just takes it like rest in peace, grandma. Well, I know, I know. You know, peace. You yeah. know, I got my, I got her wheelchair. <laughs> I you know. know, I scored. Yeah. And um, no, but like, and then they'll like not. Oh, I don't want to date someone in a wheelchair, but it's like, okay, that happens to you. Oh yeah, for sure. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn. But not as nobody like, talks about this. You realize this is breaking you're breaking okay. this. This yeah. is breaking news. Yeah. Maybe that's beep, why beep, beep, beep. wheelchair news with your anchor. Yeah. Now if they could make it if someone made a good joke like on the way out, you know? Yeah. Like at me, like like what are you gonna do with that dick, you know, or something yeah. like that? I was like, Okay, that's got some punch to it, you know? Right. Well, I'm gonna fuck your mom next, you know. Right, exactly. I'm gonna no, I'm um but you know, yeah, no, chicks do do that, you know. They're very, That's crazy. People are wild. You would think that the girls would maybe be, more of them would want to be like, I went on a date with a wheelchair. You know how the, everybody wants the virtue signal? I'll go on dates with anyone, right. even if they're in a wheelchair. Yeah, they won't, you know. <laughs> they lie. Damn. 
Right. So you have to do like you know everybody has like the fats like you like to call them have their angles you know so yeah. you have to do these like certain wheelchair guy angles that don't show the chair. Yeah. Dude, you should try to catfish a girl and show up in the chair and film it. Holy fuck, that would be a funny I bit. I feel bad. No, catfish a girl in, in the chair. You have to. Although I have that would be so funny. I, I have been catfished before, you know. So it's like, what if she catfished you and she's in a chair too? Oh my, that, just, now that would be that's funny. That's the punch. That's right. the bit, yeah. dude. No, yeah. that would be funny actually to show up and like just see her like horrified reaction, you know? Yeah. Like, to see how like long she lasted, you know? <laughs> yeah. She's like, what? I thought you might like me for who I am. Right, exactly. You know? Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, She's like, well, who you are is in a wheelchair. You even asked me about my emotional intelligence, you know? Like, yeah. right. Dude, you that's that that would be, Actually, be, I'm liking that'd be a good more. skit. That'd be a good skit. Like, if we were going to film a skit. Uh, yeah. Like, you both think you're getting one over on the other one. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? But you both show up. Be a little skit. Yeah, you write that down. Yeah. Um, I want to make some skits, dude. Anyway, yeah, I was gonna show you wheelchair stuff, but the pooch on the wheel on this wheel on the wheelchair people, right? Guys yeah, yeah. too, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's just like, and also like when, when like the way you sit in a wheelchair, it's like you're, like the the seat is actually sloped down a little bit, and like the back is like upright, and so yeah. like you're kind of like scrunched together, like as Doing well, a crunch. you know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so it's like some, you know, if you don't act, uh, exercise your ab muscles sometimes, but okay, but like that one, I wouldn't date. I swear, I searched wheelchair. I found this perfect. It just had music, so I didn't. Yeah, we we're talking about that wheels guy before. You know, he's pretty dope. Oh yeah. Um. So I did have some stuff saved here. We can go back oh, to yeah. that. Um. I actually downloaded a few of them. Makes it easier on here when we're looking around. Oh, yeah. Um. First, I want to show you some uh, something that might put somebody in a wheelchair. Um, probably. Okay. This most definitely no. probably puts somebody in a wheelchair, I'm oh. guessing. Um, My worst fear. Look is at this. Is see. it spiders? Got some volume here. Probably not spiders. Dude. Oh. 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 So for people that are just listening, this is how would you describe this thing? It's like a theme park ride where people are strapped into this like saucer, flying saucer looking thing, and it's like swinging upside down. Kind of looks like a catapult, but it's like swinging around and around. And this lady falls out. She's kind of like hanging on to something for her life, maybe like you know. And she almost like makes it out of the way, but then the thing whacks her. Oh. Okay, can we, can we go back up to like where she's like hanging on with like her torso, <laughs> like a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, let's let's look at her midsection. Okay, <laughs> she's a fat man. <laughs> now, do you see the other people falling out of there? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, maybe do some pull-ups, you know? Like, <laughs> she could have held on. <laughs> she could have held on and uh, ridden that out, you know, but. Oh, my God, A little dude. bit too the many uh, <laughs> Applebee's, uh, I don't know their desserts, but, you know. Oh, my God, dude. That's what the first thing you thought of. You have a point, though. That's what's so funny about it. And then, look, this thing just crushes. Hits her in the back, it looks like, too. Yeah, fats. Truth hurts. Fats. All right, I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> well, honestly, with the way that fat people have disrespected the the disabled community recently with asking for airline accommodations. Yeah, now you're in my dojo, bitch. I got the fucking <laughs> right. right. If you're going to be included in my area, you know, like I you're got, on the you're on the menu. You're on the menu. Absolutely. You know, you think yeah. you're exempt? Oh, fuck that. You get the fucking wrath, dude. She oh, got that would, Let's that would suck though. I'm sure she's a lovely lady. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that oh. that crunched your spine a little bit, you know. Yeah, jeez. Let's see what else we got. In here. Yeah, wish her well. Wish her well. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're such a <laughs> try to try to avoid that uh, wheelchair punch. Let's see how you work that. Oh, this I like this already. <laughs> is just, this person gonna eat? Is shit? your feed just full of like wheelchair people doing dumb shit? No, no. I try to. I try to avoid. Look, okay, look, okay. So, no. This is Would a, you ever go down a hill? Like, have you ever gone down a fast, crazy hill? Yeah, for sure. 
is there competitive like wheelchair guys that go down hills really fast like with gloves on and try to like maneuver and like I don't that'd be kind of cool there's like a downhill like, racing there's some like wheelchair x games like guys yeah, it, that like the snow cross shit you know where they go and no. they oh they're we'll they're, look that up next those guys are we're insane, gonna look that up yeah. next uh, this person this is, guy's just going i don't know if this is an accident okay this looks like russia <laughs> oh, 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 this looks like people play, maybe kids playing in a wheelchair. Yeah. Like she's just, in, they found a wheelchair. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, I guess you'd never know. But, okay, it, but, it, but it looks like maybe like if like you're, you know, a teenage kid, like let's go down the hill in grandma's wheelchair. Right. You know what I mean? But, and then, okay, also. And look at this like total face floor would swap. Oh, shit, it kind of sped up on us here. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> the camera work is very shoddy, but look, she hits the curbs. This is like CKY. Did you ever watch that? Those like old Bam Margera videos of oh, okay, like pushing okay. shopping carts around with people in them. Oh, I saw, I saw those. Look but... at this. <laughs> Maybe broken hand or neck or face. Yeah, she's just... on grass too. Okay. If she she was... kind of goes in a, there's a ditch right there though. Look. Yeah. She disappears into this ditch. It's soft grass. I see some green in there. Yeah. Plus, okay. If she's already in a wheelchair. Like, does it really make a difference, you know? like. So you're saying just fucking go hard and do stunts if you're in a wheelchair. Yeah, that's why I started smoking again, you know? Because <laughs> fuck it, right? Yeah, no. Uh, let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> this is the clip I think that you posted the other yeah. day. Yeah, this lunatic. Yeah, who's this guy? Do you know who this is? This wheels guy. So this is a guy. Can you describe this uh, before we play it to people that are... So this guy, I think um, a few people have sent it to me, but this guy is like the premier... He's like a wheelchair stunt guy. He's like so, the Dave Mira of like wheelchairs. Yeah, he's shit. actually. I think he maybe know the like knows those guys. You know, he's like in that circle because like. Oh shit! Lunatic. They're gonna fucking demonetize us. Oh, because of the music. Yeah, I need to fucking turn this shit down. Look at this lunatic already leaning back, facing the sun. Arms back. He's got yeah, good I'll posture. Turn this all the way down. He's also not fat. <laughs> okay, I'm getting right. more into this. Okay, let's see. Let's going, go. Going down so, a ramp. He's gonna do double backflip burial. Double, double back black yeah. backflip burial. Spins yeah. and then spins like clockwise. Right. Wow. Look right. at that. Oh. Look at that. Oh my god. So he does <laughs> the open hand, the Christ air. Yeah. The Christ air. Oh, he is sending it. Hell yeah. Oh my god, that's so dope. Does he end up landing it? Yeah. In this, not in this video, right? Oh no, that's attempt two. Okay. Yeah. No, I think he does land it. All right, let's watch attempt three. This guy's a G, man. Whoa. Oh my God, he smacked his face on that uh, one. He's pissed. Oh fuck. He's attempt also like five, doing Fort Worth. Hang on. Attempt six. Spinning around. Oh, oh that's oh. so lit. He that landed. is so lit. Yeah. Dude. And that's in like a big stadium. And he gets you know? it cleaner. He gets it cleaner each time. Oh my God. Oh, Look that's at that. Dumb, Boom. Man. That's so sick. Right. Would you ever do something like this? Uh, absolutely not. You would have had to start at 24, right. like training hard, right. and then by like this age, you'd be a gold medal. You'd be yeah. this guy. Yeah. That's like that lady on See, the- See, I would love to talk to that guy. Yeah. About fucking how he ended up in the chair, dude. Well, that's like that's like the lady on the amusement ride, you know? Hey, fats, know your limits, you know? Like, if, right, you got to be trained for this. You can't yeah. just like, you know, get fat and demand how airline do you, accommodations. Do you work you know? out? <clears throat> uh, I mean, no. I know you're always doing I'm like, upper body. I'm like but, pulling, yeah, I'm like, you know, moving stuff. And but like, you don't you know. like do pull ups or anything in the house no. or? No. no. They do have like one of, you mentioned like one of the rehab gyms. There's like a couple of ones because there's some wheelchair guys that have it and they have like these, uh, they have like standing frames that help like support you when you stand because mm -hmm. the human body is made to stand and ambulate, you know? And then um, they have like these FES bikes where they put elect two electrodes on your quads, mm -hmm. your hams, and your glutes, and like you use as much power as you can to like pedal the bike. It's like a recumbent bike, so you're just like sitting, and then you did it. But I did like a study when I first moved to Austin, and I in like three months you do it like three times a week, and then they measure it. And I think I added like eight pounds of lean muscle mass, to, like my legs, you know, from doing that. <coughs> so it's like. Damn. Doing the standing thing? No, doing the the recumbent bike thing. Oh, you know, okay, yeah. Like pedaling, yeah. you know. Um, but it's like it's a it's a time. It I mean, pedals I for you. You pedal as much as you can, and the machine pedals as much. So can you move? Can you pedal a little bit? A little bit, but really? it's like 
but the, those electrodes on that bike they stimulate your leg to like oh okay, in cool. in order from like the way you that sounds like expensive yeah. yeah and it's a lot of time because like you have, have to do it for a couple hours you know and mm-hmm. but you know i do need to work out more but no i don't do anything like i have some like free weights but sure. mainly just like lifting You're shit up in your diet right <clears throat> right because there's some like bodybuilders and shit and like there's like buff guys in wheelchairs and shit yeah because you could do a lot of i mean conor mcgregor just sat there and lifted weights when he you know anything about ufc or anything a little bit he got he's like shattered his leg but that one so that was that one where he broke his leg and he <coughs> yeah, sat down. In half, okay. yeah and so he was in the chair for a long time just posting like videos of him just pumping oh, and yeah. he was on steroids too because he was allowed to be because it's fucking you know everybody right. thinks he was or i'm sure he was a doctor right. put him on steroids to mend his bones and muscles and shit back together but he was just like he's like so puffy now from just like you know lifting the upper body strength i feel like uh yeah i feel like i feel like this guy is you know you were talking about knowing your limits you know i feel like this guy i don't know what he's trying how you know i appreciate him trying to help here but right come on come on come on come on come on come on He's just trying to help, dude. Right. Can you describe what it is to people? Okay, this is an old Come man on. being Come taken on. advantage Come of on. by <laughs> some younger people. And there's like a rope tied around his chair to a tree stump, which is not moving by a guy in a chair. And then they've got like some sort of tractor, which is doing the entire work, you know, and they're encouraging him and pitying him. And they're laughing at him, you know? I just, they want to make him feel strong. Like he's helping, dude. But he's not, you know? <laughs> Does he fall or anything? No. Oh, he just sits there? Yeah, I think he just got credit for work he didn't do. What's, exactly. What's this uh what's this wheelchair snow you're talking about? What's it called? Oh, uh, like uh wheelchair X games. Like wheelchair snow cross or something like that. can't type either is it this trevor big air trevor kinnison do you know that name i don't know uh, wait, yeah x games they do it at the x games <clears throat> maybe we can try a youtube one if we just i turn, have skied, if we just turn the volume off maybe. i have skied before Absolutely but i just ended up like epic. falling down on my head let's see if we can maybe if we don't use the audio i think we'll be okay see that chick is cute is she in a wheelchair though? I don't know, but she's cute and she has pigtails. All right, let's get to the magic here. He's being so, in. what does this guy do in the snow? He's on know. a wheelchair. He's in a wheelchair. Is that really a wheelchair or is it a ski chair? It's like a sit ski. Okay. Yeah, I've done that before. It's uh. Whoa. But he, you have to stay balanced on that thing. Yeah. It's Whoa. Insane. This. this Whoa! Snow. It's like a uniski. Yeah. Holy shit. Don't yeah. tell me they do tricks and shit. Oh, yeah. No, he's going to flip like that other no guy. No way. Okay. Oh. oh, my God. That's fucking. Oh. Did, oh, he, yeah. did he eat it? Oh, yeah. yeah. He ate it. Well, he's all right. He's already paralyzed. Yeah. So anything he does is fucking dope. Oh, man. I think my back's hurt. Oh. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. He's going to do another one here. That is so crazy. Man, I love how fucking, like, driven and fucking awesome people are they're just no matter what they're dealt there's always somebody that's going to do some sweet shit like this yeah that mountain is actually that's buttermilk mountain that's actually the first mountain i ever skied on it's the first mountain i met my stepmom at is so that, he's his legs are locked in almost like in a sitting position and yeah. there's a single ski it's a, it looks like oh. it's bigger than a ski it looks like half a snowboard basically yeah. that's about what size the ski thing is yeah i don't think those things are made for jumping and landing yeah Ooh. Did I mean, you ever think about, I guess you can't, you still have your legs, so you wouldn't ever want to get, like, a prosthetic situation going? Like, what, did, was that ever a conversation? Like, ah, let's cut them off and just get some plastic ones. No. No. no it's like, why keep the legs if they're not, if they, why do people keep them if you can't use them? Because you might use them someday, they might come up with surgery or something. Yeah, I'm not, like, holding my breath, you know? Yeah. Like, but. Nice to have them. Yeah, like you want. I like my legs. Like, yeah. where do they stop? You know, like. Right. I have a buddy with with two fake legs. Really? I told you that. Remember, I told you I have handicapped friends. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know if I'm buying it. I do. Right. 
<clears throat> he's in this he's in a, he's a buddy of mine he's in this band shout out to hunter he's in this band called chernobyl the secret it's actually a really funny story he uh we we were went on this little we went on a big nationwide tour and then the three texas days uh chernobyl was on um was on like just the texas days with us right. so we got introduced to these guys started hanging out with them we stayed with them like a couple of nights oh yeah and so uh we stayed at this uh like cabin that their band one of their bandmates families had and that night he goes uh, or no earlier at the show he was like uh i was like what's up man chernobyl the secret let's go you know like it's good to see you good nice to meet right. you guys he goes do you know what the secret is <laughs> what and i was like no and, and he goes one of us is way shorter than everyone else <laughs> and i was like I, like just cryptic just said this to me right? right and so i'm like thinking about this shit all day long and then uh and then i see we go to this uh we go to this cabin after the show and he's uh he's taking he took he's like we're all changing you know what right. i mean getting ready for bed and uh and i noticed he's like see and he and he pulls off his leg and i was like oh my god no no he came out uh we were all chilling on the porch and he comes out and he doesn't have like he has shorts on and you could see his, oh like, nice yeah you could see his plastic legs. so that was the secret yeah that's the wow. secret yeah that was the secret that's fucking dope man and then my other my other homie shout out matt leone he's like i think he used to be like a weightlifter or like bodybuilder some kind of athlete right and then um he's like all tatted up and shit and fucking runs host barbecue events and stuff i'm gonna bring him on here too oh yeah this is just gonna be the fucking wheelchair guy podcast after this cool day. then i'm gonna intentionally hurt myself so i can be put in a wheelchair imagine if there was a psycho that wanted it that wanted that there's an old uh, movie i can't remember it's like uh nick stall you ever mm -mm. it's like that actor who's on uh, carnival and uh, on hbo okay and like he is, I think he's actually in a wheelchair, I think, or he wants to be, but there's like this subgroup of people where like they're in this movie and it's like a bunch of people who like cut off their limbs or like want to be in a wheelchair. <laughs> what? Yeah. They're weird, man. There's like, there's. It's a real thing. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna look I mean, the up. movie is not real. It's not a documentary. Oh, it's not. Okay. No, but they, but it's about like real, there are real people like that, you know? Really? Yeah, sure. Did People you ever? Wild, what about man. what about that uh, that girl who had her mom killed? That she was doing the Munchausen by proxy with uh -huh. her. You remember that chick? Yeah, Rosie or like a Roxy. Oh my god, that what was her name? Um, yeah. What's her name? Gypsy. You were close. Yeah. <clears throat> Gypsy Rose, that was it. So never had to be in a wheelchair. That had to be so weird. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that was a wild. That uh, documentary on HBO is fantastic. Yeah, the series. I think, didn't she, like, just get out of jail or something? Uh, or she's about to, I want to say. Yeah, she convinced her online boyfriend or whatever to come killer mom paroled three years early <clears throat> this was okay can you can you go back to a picture of september of this year she got paroled there you go can you go back to a picture of her mom <laughs> you know where this is going okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay i sorry fats i'm just dealing out truth here um so this fat was trying to in <laughs> Trapped this sweet little look at this little cherub, you know. It looks like a little, uh, <laughs> little nice little girl. Actually, the, she was nice before. Her, like her mom had her like teeth pulled out and shit. She's fucking wild. Yeah, dude, that is a crazy fat. Yeah, <clears throat> that's peak peak top tier crazy fat. Yeah, for sure. So she looks, dude. She she looks kind of hot around. Yeah. You know, you, Definitely got problems, but I'm just saying, you know, would you, what would you, what would you Absolutely do? not. You Come know on. how bad that would be for my self-esteem? I mean, if you think about it, though, is it not kind of hot to you that she, like, made it out of the chair? You know what I mean? Like, she was- Oh, like a, su a success story, you know? Kind of. You made it. <laughs> that part is cool, but she was, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, are you just mocking me with the fact that I'm never going to get out of my chair? No. Yeah, I guess maybe she would like, be. Like, hey, Boone, tell us about when you weren't going to walk again. What about that origin story? Oh, no, no. I'm just fucking no, around. No, no. I'm just fucking around. Um, Don't put that on me, Boone. I just want to hear your I'm perspective, buddy. Around, man. Oh, look there. I take nothing personally. Is, 
Look at her. Look at her face. Look at her fat. Look at her chins. <laughs> All right. Listen up, podcast people. <laughs> Cannot trust anyone with three chins. Actually, you can't trust them. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I don't think you should. Look, Shit. airline people, people disabling their own little dog. Look at that sweet little girl. Yeah. Her mom had all of her teeth pulled and shit. That's that's a bummer. Falsified all of her doc like her medical documents to get more unnecessary medical treatments on her. That was a wild story. That was just such a crazy story. Yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah. And then on top to have the murder mystery on top of that, where she had an online boyfriend guy, she basically convinced to come and, and kill her mom. Right. Like that right. is that is even more wild. Yeah. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm not looking at my DMs on the podcast. We'll cut this out. Um, let's see here. I was trying to find there was one specific fucking fight video. And it's not giving me I typed in wheelchair fight and it's not giving me results. And I think that that is just bullshit. Um, yeah, those rugby people, they um, I, now like boxing wise, like I would put on like headgear and like spar with someone for sure, you mm. know? Like the the wheelchair rugby guys that Mark Zupan guy we're talking about before, those guys are insane. They run into each other and they knock each other out of their wheelchairs, um, like on the ground. I mean, they're like, they try they try to. It's like a thing. They Searches. smash into each other. You know, it's wild. The I think the like one of the the hey, training is this guy working out. Whoa, dude, that guy's a G. Dude, that's how you get the core strength. Yeah, for sure. Dude, if you want to do this with me, I have the medicine balls and the these balls at my apartment. Okay, gym. Let's, let's maybe this will sound like I'm too. an asshole, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought that was the same guy. I got like when I first looked at it, <laughs> just like they're both bald. No, yeah, like, I thought it was like a mirror down the middle, you mm -hmm. know. But there's obviously two guys. One guy's head have legs. No, they both don't. I mean, one guy has more legs. Yeah, I guess he's got a little bit of leg. <laughs> <laughs> Three quarter leg. Take what you can get out of here, dude. Yeah. I want to try. Where's more videos of them playing? Okay, here we go. Is it done indoors? Yeah. yeah well, I want to. I want to see them. They have special wheels, like armor. It's like a shield. Yeah. Not. Oh. Hit them harder. I want to see those guys like. Yes. Yeah, so really beat each other up. Yeah, they're like it's like rugby. You know, there's like blockers and there's uh -huh. like forwards. I don't really know or, much about. Rugby. Yeah. Is you there a, is there a wheelchair ice hockey? That would be crazy. They do, but it's that it, it is, but it's so boring because mm. it's so slow. You know? Yeah. It's like women's basketball. It's like the <laughs> women's basketball <laughs> wheelchair, wheelchair sport. sport. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Write that down. It is. Because they're moving slow. They're like trying to do the. I feel like there's unlimited material for you, Boone Blocker. <laughs> I, I wouldn't like even try. I mean, that was the truth, by the way. You know, I just I'm down for some special. That's crazy, but. Oh yeah, we're gonna look that up. Oh, they also have the Paralympics, which is the shit. They have the the Paralympics. Oh, so there's two different things. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I think the I think the Special Olympics. I think there is a uh, intellectual disability component to it. Probably, you know? yeah. And the Paralympics are just like people with like some form of disability, you know, like some part like osteoporosis. Uh, osteoporosis. No, that guy that schwacked his girlfriend, you know, with the two little bionic legs or whatever. What? No, yeah. Os Oscar Pretorius is a murderer. Yeah, killed his family. The wheelchair guy. Uh, his girlfriend in Australia. <clears throat> yeah, he had, he was like his called a uh, Blade Runner. He had like Jesus. those two these things. Yeah, he had those. Okay, that chick is hot. That is a hot chick with no legs. Right. Okay. See. Hap wow. Yep. See. Holy shit. She's got. She's got a dump truck on her, dude. Yeah, she does. Holy Jesus Christ! I'm like, what's? Yeah. Wow, that chick was that hot. That's a good-looking chick. See, that's there's two ways you can take the disability thing. I'm gonna sit on the couch and like, you know, be depressed, or you can get the fucking fake legs and have, you know, be hot and be hot and have an ass like that. That's yeah. that swimmer was cute too. Which one? Yeah, but see, these people are not in wheelchairs though, so. But yeah, she probably is though. She's not wearing those all the time. You think she's in a? She has a wheelchair. She has no arms either. Uh, wow, dude, she's okay. That's a bit much. Are you serious? You yeah, wouldn't? man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I okay. Talking about sexual, you know, like accommodations. You mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like she could a, not. It comes ac- back to accommodation. Right. I I don't want to be wronged. You know. Like so. Should I really have to date people? Like no. You're like her. I've been through enough in my life. No. I that, want a girl with hands. That's. Well, yeah, <laughs> she's well, she's gonna need them. You know. But like that will. <laughs> well, yeah. You say the most funny shit just when you're not even trying to. Oh, no, I'm not trying. I know, I know, I know. That's the best part about it. (laughs) This guy with one leg shooting a bow. How is that Paralympics? Well, I guess you probably need your body for a bow. It's probably hard. I probably can't shoot a bow, even if though I have two legs, I probably can't shoot a bow. So that's crazy. See, I didn't. I don't think I knew. I don't think I knew about the Paralympics. I just like me, maybe I thought it was all Special Olympics, but I guess the Special. Yeah, so Olympics they have the Olympics, and then in the same Olympic city, they have the Paralympics right after that. Mm, you know? Okay, that's so rad. Yeah, and so I like, love these stories of these people just battling the adverse, oh yeah the no, adversity. Th- those guys are it almost awesome. makes it more sick than the regular Olympics. Like yeah. the regular Olympics is people with like freak of nature, crazy bodies, right? And then these are people that have like a handicap. You know, not even not even to say they're handicapped, but like right. they're they're at a disadvantage sure. and they're still crushing yeah. despite like all the adversity. That's that almost makes it more of a hero story when they win shit. And do yeah, you know how like the Olympic Village, like during the Olympics, is just like all the athletes fucking. Can you imagine the funny kind of shit that happens at like the Paralympics fucking? You know? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. So like, it's notorious that like at the Olympics, all the athletes fuck. That's all they do in the Olympic Village. Just fuck really? each other. Yeah, for the entire time of the Olympics. Did you know about this? You know about this? I'm yeah. the only one that doesn't know about the Olympics. So at the Paralympics, I wonder. So like, so it's just hot athletes just banging, just banging. sweaty, nasty. The genetic, yeah, Olympic ge- sweat. Genetic freaks from all over the Sex. world recognizing other genetic freaks from all over the world. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, this is like fucking. Is that a porn category? Maybe it should be. It should. But so they do it at Paralympics too. They'd be fucking. Yeah, but like maybe they have to. Okay, here's the accommodations that we need, you know, (laughs) is that at the Paralympic Village, you know, they have to, like, install, like, sex swings, you know, like, from the, because they have those, you know, and then they have, like, these. (laughs) They come down from the hotel rooms, like, the masks on an airplane come down, you just hit a button and the fucking. Yeah, no, they're already pre-installed, you know, and they move around the room, you know, and then there's, like, they have, like, these sex rider things, they're, they're very weird, they're, like, a, I don't know what you, like, you get in them and then you, like, you can, like, move the. You can like pull the arms back and it like it does like a thrusting motion. <laughs> How do you spell paraplegic? Okay, I hope you're gonna ask me to spell that. It's all right. I spelled it right. Sweet. The intimate sex rider. Is this what you're talking about? You the go. intimate rider is a sex chair with yeah. gliding action created by a man of course. with a C67 SCI. What does that mean? It's another invention is, is done that a spinal? by a man. Is this a spinal? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, the the cervical <clears throat> vertebrae are the uh, levels in your neck. It's like okay, cervical, so thoracic, C6 lumbar. C6-7 th- SCI. So yeah. his, his C6 and 7 yeah, were about, fucked up. Yeah, it's about right here like, okay. on the back of your neck. To improve mobility during s- sexual activity, some arm movement is necessary to stabilize yourself and set the intimate rider into motion. It's Ooh, the, the intimate rider. Do you have an intimate rider? No. but Is I'm that a, what they call you? I'm gonna, That's your nickname, uh, dude. The offensive rider. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait a minute. So the does the girl lay down here? I don't know where the cot got involved. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I've never seen the, the cot part of that. Just the Wait chair part. Eight accessible sex toys. <laughs> How are those accessible? I don't though? know. That's just the banner photo. Is this the rider that you're talking about? Though? Yeah. So it's just a chair? I don't get... Oh, so you can... It, like, it swivels back and forth, so it does like the thrusting. It helps you with the thrusting. So you grab a hold of her, Yeah. and then you can... You basically get this motion out of the chair. Yeah, but I like to do that just like myself, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, why involve machines... When you can just right. do it yourself, you know? When I am the machine. Exactly. Why involve the machine when I am the machine? I am the machine. Is there? Is that the only one? I don't know. Oh, here we go. Here's a little action pick. Wait. Yeah, I still, that is a weird photo. I still don't understand. <laughs> that is the weirdest photo ever, dude. Yeah, I still don't understand why there's a cot, you know? Like. Yeah, I don't. So she can lay down, so doggy style can be achieved. Still. Ah, okay. There right. You go. Yeah. I'm thinking lay down flat. Yeah. The title of this is going to be having sex in a wheelchair with 
Boone Blocker. That's, yeah, that's use, the title of this podcast. I hope you know this whole podcast is just here's, now this. Here's one thing. You're giving that, us incredible insight. Here's one thing that I agree with the housewives on, you know, supportive pillows, you know, because if you get some like some decorative pillows, you can like use those as like you can put people in like and it's just like it, logistics, you know, like mm-hmm. you've got to put people in position where you can actually like be with someone, you know, right. So. You know, pillows are good like that. Nice. You know? So you make use of those useless throw pillows. Yeah. You could look those pillows that only go on the bed when it's made and then you rip them off and go to sleep. Yeah. You make use of, you make good use of those pillows. Yeah. Like along came Polly, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Mm-hmm. Fucking stabs all of those. But you'd stack those pillows up and go to town. Yeah, for sure. Or like put them on both sides of me so I'm not flopping over, you mm-hmm. know? Because I can balance like on my knees, you know? But it's. You can? Yeah. Okay. But it's like, you know, I got little chicken legs, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I need some help, you know, some right decorative pillows. See, that's why I've, I feel like you would, I feel like you would like a sturdier bitch, sturdy girl. You know what I mean? But you like, you don't, you like them thin and, 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 uh, mobile. athletic, mobile. Mobile. Yeah. I see. I see. I'm just starting to understand. It's really just, I'm just trying to understand. It's you know logistics. What I, mean? it I know is. I sound like a misogynistic asshole, you know, or, fat phobic or whatever you know but it's logistics You're i really just a man in a, in the chair who knows yeah. what he wants yeah. and what he needs accommodate me yeah you you have needs listen up fats <laughs> be less fat than, no i'm just <laughs> you're like fuck. listen up fats don't hit on wheelchair people we don't do you think that's a do you think there's a guy in wheel there has to be dudes in wheelchairs that like bigger chicks yeah for sure okay it's not a normal it's not a you don't get together with other dudes in chairs and talk about how you don't like fat chicks um no no, I don't have a like. I have well, I have one less friend, my friend Tony. You know that killed himself, yeah. but I, I love that guy by the way. You know he's fucking awesome. Um, but um, you know, so I don't have like all wheelchair friends. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, some people think that. <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah. Okay. This people funny... think you just hang out in the wheelchair community. Yeah, for sure. This is a funny story about local politics, and why you know. I think politics is actually gayer than being gay, you know, like, is that I, w- I was like doing like a sidewalk meeting and um, just, hey, there needs to be more sidewalks, you know. And so we show up to this meeting and we have a meeting. And then my friend who is also working on the product, not in a wheelchair, she did a freedom of information request on what like the internal memos were like saying about our work and like about us, you know. So she did like my name, her name, city of Austin. And um and so this uh, um, this guy, he said, "Yes, I met with Boone Blocker, and I also I also talked with Adapt, which is like this these motherfuckers. That's the reason why there's a lot of accessibility, especially in Austin, is these guys are fucking like giants. They were like back before the ADA was uh, passed into legislation, the Americans with the mm-hmm. Disabilities Act, which is like public accommodations." Um, they would, if the buses were not accessible, like city buses, transit, you know, they would like chain themselves to buses and be like, hey, if I can't get on this bus, this bus is not moving, you know? Holy shit. They would like go to the Capitol and like drag themselves. What's it called? A-D-A-P-T. It's an acronym. It's like, uh, it used to stand for the American Americans with Disabilities for Accessible Public Transportation. Is it like a foundation or group? It's like a group. But a lot of them actually started in Austin. Yeah, those guys are fucking G's. I mean, okay. Are there some of them that are just like fat people on rascal scooters? No, these are back. This is back before there were so many fats. That would be pretty funny if yeah, they were. If they were, it's a South Park episode. I feel like they're all like, we need accommodations. See, okay, listen up, listen up, current fats. Like these people are like in good shape, you know. Yeah, so they they work to like get uh, public accommodations and like they help get the ADA passed back in 89 damn and they would like take themselves oh, you know like that yeah oh these are these are more recent <laughs> yeah but back in the day they, yeah. they would it chain is, themselves to buses yeah and they'd also like throw themselves on the ground and like crawl up steps um or you know bear crawl up steps until like there was an accessible we will ride the yeah. origin of disability rights movement in Denver. Yeah, this was in Denver too, Colorado. Yeah. It's a lot to read. Yeah, I just wanted to look for some photos of these guys. 
Yeah, so that that's why. Damn, I'm, look at that. Right. Taxation without transportation. Damn, they're dropping yeah. the not. They're not dropping bombs. Yeah, if they were, they're saying we're not paying taxes unless you fucking right put a handicapped seat on the motherfucker right. or a ramp to get on there. You know. And this was also probably before wheelchairs were also like. Yeah. You know. In a lot of countries, actually, people in like the premier country. I mean, I know there's like spots in other countries that are that's awesome, but the like the premier country for. Uh, people with disabilities is the United States of America. I mean, it's not even fucking close. The reason that there's accessibility elsewhere in the world is because of what these people did. And like specifically, like, you know, a lot of them, like I've met a couple of them and they're like, they're radical people, you know, like they only wear tie dye or whatever, you know, but like in a lot of countries, like people in wheelchairs, they don't go outside of their house or they, they only <sighs> go, crazy. I know, or they, or they only go where their family members or friends are like, willing to take, them, carry yeah. them, you know, like carry them. <clears throat> Do you, oh, that's another question I had. Do you drive? Do you have a I, car? I don't have a car. I Uber it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is an accessible Uber in Austin, mm-hmm. which I was like the writer zero of. I was like, I was involved in like local politics and I was like getting out of that. And so I was like the first, it's like the, it's like a, uh, yeah. More of a uh, like celebratory thing. Like an, it wasn't like I was the first rider, although I was. So there's like an accessible version of Uber that has like uh, wheelchair accessible mm-hmm. ones. But like sometimes when there's not one available because there's only like limited numbers of them, I'll just like I can get in and out of a car. Like I break my wheelchair down. Like I jump over to the seat. This wheelchair, like the tire pops off, um, and then the other tire pops off, and then you, you just, can like, close it. Yeah, no, it doesn't close. It doesn't collapse. Like, okay. So you want this one to be like rigid frames. You don't want it to like the ones that have like collapsible stuff in the middle are like a bit more wobbly and not as like mm-hmm. secure. So like this one is, uh, it's a lot more rigid. And but I can you know take it apart you know yeah uh, e- really easily. So I've been doing it for years. If you, know? you have so, to, if you have to fuck somebody's mother. Yeah. Well, for sure. I've, I actually this is wild. I took a Uber uh, Uber <laughs> access ride. At like four in the morning, you know, to an ex girlfriend's house because she saw something outside, you know. See, she didn't call a girl, you know. <laughs> They're still calling your ass. I know. Like, oh my God, I think I'm scary something outside. I was like, all right, I'll come over. If you were fat, you wouldn't be able to do that. Exactly. Like, and you went over, and what happened? Um, there was nothing outside, you know, surprise, surprise. I think it was like a booty call, you know. It was, yeah. yeah. Boone, I need your help. You're yeah. like, wait a minute, you need the, you need my yeah. help. I'll give you some accommodations. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you some accommodations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it was cool. But it was like it was funny. Like, you know, you get in the Uber ride, and I know like the 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 service is like, I know that like a lot of the same drivers like Uber actually employs. They have it like in a lot of cities in America, um, and it's awesome because they haven't like Lyft doesn't have it. And it's really cool. They like didn't they never drop it. You know, I don't think mm-hmm. it's a big money maker for them because uh, they contract through like a private like company to do it. You know, right. And um, it's really cool because you know. So I I know it's a lot of the same riders, but it, or the same drivers. I mean, and so I like I knew the guy that was taking me there at, like four in the morning. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was just like a funny conversation. You yeah. know, like hey, what are you doing? I'm just going over to to my ex girlfriend's house. You know. Um, why you know uh, he didn't ask why mm-hmm. but you know ghosts or something mm-hmm. i don't know so. so i could get some ass some, <laughs> yeah. some accommodations i was actually pissed i was asleep you know yeah but i did it you know you were the hero in that i'm moment, a g dude. you're because you're a hero i think that's yeah. a great place to wrap it up dude we've been going for a while uh yeah. boone blocker i love you man i'm so glad you came Thanks, out man. and did that was this a lot of fun. that was so much fun dude <laughs> really? we, yeah i think you, oh, yeah. you you shared some uh you dropped some knowledge on us like right. i said i think people are just i i don't i know i'm curious i have all the you know curious questions and you don't just run up to a person you don't know and start asking questions about yeah. you know and yeah. i don't i don't know a ton of people like in a wheelchair I, like i said i have i got some right. friends right no but uh but you know i appreciate your you know have being a good sport having fun talking about it absolutely and like it's just, a lot of just fun. sharing the information it's so it's because life fun. is different for people yeah. that uh have to go through different struggles and shit you know what yeah, i mean for sure. so i was it was interesting to hear about that and also just to hear about your um <clears throat> you know your attitude and how that played played into your recovery and just your overall quality of life it seems like yeah if you're uh if you weren't so you know positive and happy and fun and like joking around you know yeah. what i mean and like um 
just wanting to have a good life, it seems like, you know, life would be a lot tougher. Absolutely. You know, so. I think that's a good lesson for everybody, actually. Absolutely. You know, yeah. you like, got to keep a positive attitude. You're shit. still alive, right? Like, everybody's still breathing, you yeah. know? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, not Mitch McConnell, but, you know, or... <laughs> yeah, he'll be out here. Or soon. Dianne Feinstein. He'll be in a wheelchair soon. Or Matthew Perry, you know? Yeah. Like, uh... <laughs> Shit, dude, just fucking drop on him in real quick. Yeah. At the buzzer, dude. Right. Boon blocker at the All buzzer. Right. Hey, oh, yeah. plug your uh, Instagram, anything, any shows you have coming up, I guess. I don't know. This will be out in a couple of weeks, so I don't know. Yeah, my Instagram is my name, Boon J Blocker. Um, I'm doing... The boat show, I think, on the twenty seventh of November. Okay. Doing this another will be out by then, I think. Yeah, I'm doing another show on, on November third at Shakespeare's, you know. And I'm just gonna be I think you are a comedic force to be reckoned with. And uh once the world fully knows about Boom Blocker and you work on your craft, you know, over yeah. time I think you know, whatever that's worth coming from me. I, yeah. I'm just a fan of comedy, you yeah. know, that is trying to learn how to do it and uh but as a fan, I'm a fan of yours. I like your 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 jokes and thanks, and man. Your I appreciate it's it. Fucking awesome, dude. I love every time I go up to a mic and you're at the mic, I'm like, yes, my buddy's oh, yeah. there. I'm gonna go talk to Boone. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming, brother. Thank Let's you, run that you. outro, dude. <laughs>